So where we left off from last time is we had spent about two weeks in downtime. Uh, Christmas is coming up. Uh, what have you. The various species were on different projects. Um, last week you had managed to uh, shave off a few <coughs> pounds, was it a pound or two off of the um, biometric sensors. You had some great success with the perichronic um, detection lens. It could be powered to create a more um, high fidelity image. But the passive sensors right now would outline anything that has cross bridge particle radiation. And MI5 was, MI, the Bureau of Water Reclamation was extremely interested in the technology because you were able to produce it for relatively cheap and it didn't require an outside power source, meaning the whole apparatus could weigh a couple ounces. And they were able to detect more easily. Um, you're aware that they use large units to detect radiation like that, but you're looking at a close to an eight pound handheld device with an antenna and right. scanning utilities. Um, then Trevor is working on a gravitic uh, hammer with a channeling for a lightning bolt, uh, the healing. I just started that. I, I made the healing stuff, then I was working on golems, and then yep. I, I said I was going to next week start that. Well, you had gotten the channeling thing completed last week. Um, from what I remember... I'll go with that. You you did because we were talking about the um, the end bits, um, so the hammer was actually pretty close to being done um, from the weeks prior. Then the the first week was you were working on the healing potions, uh, a derivative of your healing patch wax stuff, and it wasn't too far off, but it just took some time to develop those. Um, then you were talking about uh, Gabriel Verus and his. Um, Oh, yeah, because I wanted some golem creatures. The and they're not necessarily what you would think of a mystical golem, but if I can That's pull up the spell points. list here. Christ, he's always like, take 80 points. <laughs> it's like, okay, I five left. <laughs> you get positive hit points. I know. Such I know. One. Now you can take 97. Exactly. <laughs> ba -ba -ba -ba. One or two, one or it's one. okay, the gods are getting stronger, too. Well, you always take 80 points of damage because it's like, I stop it with my face! <laughs> <laughs> or I'm going to take this bowie knife and run into the zombie horde. <laughs> Facing this way. You make it sound like I have bad ideas. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just the ideas leading up to the event that is caused. You have good ideas at the time, it's just everything prior to them. They're like, huh, I should have packed more. <laughs> Maybe we should have read up about this place. Maybe we shouldn't have drinking the water here in Mexico. Speaking from experience now, are you? That was an icy from Mexico, and how do I know? At the time, I didn't realize to me that Mexico makes uh, unfiltered ices. <laughs> you could have Fun times. So what he uses is a, a series of uh, spirit shells on a medium, and he ends up binding uh, lesser elemental spirits that are present in kind of most things. Uh, he said that there was issues with um, their level of sentience was relatively low, so they could do things like pick up coffee cups and uh, but you could attempt to go to areas. But uh, I believe he said that you could make them higher doing other things. So yep. The, the type of spirit that he used wasn't terribly that sentient, but theoretically you could try to bind or negotiate with a more powerful entity that would be more intelligent. The only thing is your, your ability to control them also inversely depreciates yeah. as soon as they become more powerful. Uh, otherwise, we can continue to go in downtime. From what you're aware, um, Omar Bahauden hasn't found anything terribly huge, um, but he's been indicating that cross-bridge particle events have been happening kind of here and there. It's just nothing is a huge outlier, and general radiation emissions have been drastically increased from the last three years. <coughs> So you're getting a higher and higher amount where the small things that might have tipped you off initially just aren't showing up anymore because they're not that huge and relative. They're getting flooded out. A little bit. So he still is monitoring that. He is um, a, uh, what the hell is it? He is fairly frequently found at B's facility. He does his own lab that's probably about seven blocks away from B's main lab, and it's actually on B's laboratory grounds. Get on my phone. Hey, B, if you talk to the Dirty Turk and tell him that he actually needs to maybe get us the next generation of technology, something with a little better filtering capabilities for predicting the future. I'll, uh, He's probably too busy predicting. The You're aware operates. that he had worked a little bit with Walter Riker, but everyone's been kind of trying to grab Walter Riker for their own various projects. Um, it seems like Riker had... A, Obviously, he was the individual that um, had first coined the idea of heavy cross-bridge particles, or at least the modern equivalent of. Uh, so he had some ideas about the project, but obviously a lot of things have been happening. Um, 
Omar Bahauddin is uh, pretty good with the technology, but um, he just recently s somewhat developed it, only about a year or two ago. He'd probably need significant resources to continue to develop it. You're actually probably in the best location, who's at the best position to help him because you have engineering parachronic, which the particle that he uses to detect future events is temporal and parachronic. And what am I working on right now? I don't even remember. You're working on the various modes. Um, the model that... The life force lens. Yep. Yep. The model that <laughs> Dusk can Remember I was negotiating. <laughs> Go the, on. the sensor suite uh, th that comes in a goggle package right. that Dusk had provided you <coughs> was pretty difficult to replicate with your current level of technology. Um, you think you could have done it, it would have been heavy, and it would have been fairly expensive given everything that had a compact in there. So you took two of the um, modes, That's right. um, the heavy cross critical it was it heavy dimensional um, analysis and the biometric systems. Uh, you had the uh, success with the dimensional sciences, but had some issues miniaturizing the size of the uh, biometric sensors. It originally was around three pounds, but you managed to get it down to about a pound and a half, which is quite wearable. It's definitely smaller than um, anything that MI5 is currently using, or the or is it Bureau of Water and Land Reclamation. Okay. They have those two entities have very similar technological trees, so it's obviously apparent to you at least that they have cross developed at points in times. Uh, it's not like they're actively vying against each other. Their threats have always been really shit that's out to get humanity. It's just they have different flavors. MI5 has always had to deal with Blue Hades when. Um, what the hell's the uh, Bureau of Land Reclamation and Water Reclamation is primarily dealt from what you understand, various, uh, Darius North, is dimensional entities happening across larger areas. Okay. So back countrysides, disappearing things, things from other dimensions. So there is a bit of different technological lines. You know that, uh, what is it, the um, Bow or um, Bauer has more advanced technology regarding dimensional buttresses and other things of that nature, which they kind of... Um, had some development from the stuff that you had provided them with. Okay. Uh, but MI5 doesn't have, I suppose, offhand. Obviously, they can share technology. They have similar resources to make these things. But, yeah, uh, you could potentially help Omar Bahauddin develop new uh, systems. Uh, right now, he's been primarily the only person that's really been monitoring the situation. So, during active development, of course, he wouldn't be able to continue to monitor the situation, not without at least getting more people and assistance. Training people up to use the detection systems, getting his own development team, his funding. He has a fair amount of uh, money, but uh, he's more of an academic. Right. I, I need to clone myself. How much does that cost? <laughs> <laughs> You're not aware of how to do that so far, so you'd have to do some research into it. On that, uh, you are aware that the Blue Hades creatures have some means of uh, reanimating or at least animating dead tissue. So, something of that equivalency. From what you remember of Dr. Ha Gravenhurst zombies, apparently his variety of reanimated dead used sample of his own brain culture, and he was able to somehow control them like mindless zombie slaves. I need intelligent things. It's my use to. Mankind. Um, so, if you guys decide, uh, what is it? You can either go day by day, you can do whatever you want. Something may occur. I always have to stress that during downtime. I might have something on the agenda mm -hmm. in three days, and you might be aware that you're, you might think that you have four months downtime. Yep. So, you could be like, oh, let's go a week for the Bahamas. <laughs> What's that fire in the distance? That's the ocean. Why is it a fire? <laughs> hmm. I brought marshmallows. <laughs> Let's just try to reel off weeks at a time. Okay. Otherwise, you know, coming up this week, um, a lot of the people at your facility are going to be having a um, Christmas party. The same thing is actually occurring um, in Drumna Drake. They send him an invite. He's in. Uh, obviously, Wait, most of these. Doesn't she know that I kill anybody who sends me an invite? <laughs> <laughs> That's my vow. <laughs> Wait, it says I'm planning this event. I send this to myself? 
Walter Riker did a good uh, job of um, hiring the individuals for this lab. All of them are very cheerful and extremely good team workers. Um, so, I mean, you're always welcome at the lab unless there's some sort of policy that gets instated in the future. Um, and if anything, those of you with a military background have found it at times shockingly lacking security. There's two security guards that don't really know too much, but if somebody comes in like, I'm with B, and it's weird, they're like, yeah, B has weird shit going on. <laughs> so the, somebody's wheeling out a large warehouse, or is it a crate or something, or somebody's in a vehicle, like, no, I'm with B, I'm be just going to be normal. taking this. They're like, okay. <laughs> That's really sad for me. <laughs> did, you, did you pay attention to my last bullet point of things that I sent you down? Apparently so. <laughs> go, go hire somebody from the Rainbow Division, division to take care of your security. She has security. thus far had no issues, but exactly. it, it is apparent. You get your own I mean, Not only that, but you've also seen that a lot of times they keep logs of inventory. You've seen every time that Jeb is over, there's always like one ounce of premium or some like capacitor that's missing. It was on the table right here, you know, in the, the conference room. All right, you got shrinkage. <laughs> yeah, I got jab, <laughs> jabage. Yep, you're building power suits. And, you need and demon to man. You demon man was stealing shit from you. He's militia. All right, you're right. I got to get somebody here that can do security a little bit better than what we got. So I'm going. Whatever to, you, know, you want to do. I'm going to make some phone calls to the Rainbow Division. Yes. See if they have any retired people that might be interested in security work. Particularly people who are perhaps. Slightly crippled and can't be field agents anymore. Mm -hmm. um, you can give me, I would probably say, you do have a good background with the uh, Rainbow Division, essentially, since you primarily were the um, uh, main developer of their current version of uh, dimensional buttresses. You give me a diplomacy. <coughs> okay. I do it by nine. Yeah, you could easily find, I would probably say, four names that you give you. Um, contacting those individuals, I can write you up some NPCs and characters, which I, you can print out for next session. But um, uh, some individuals, two of them are a little bit older, probably in their later um, 40s, but still fairly capable. Think of you like your old, kind of retired Indiana Jones. Um, your, and then probably a younger individual that might have a slight limp just due to he was recently a field agent. And then yeah. once again, I'll get their names, backgrounds, yada, yada, yada. But yeah. they seem like good individuals. They do have a background in the strange and unusual, particularly dimensional occurrences. Um, they don't have as much field experience with Blue Hades, but that hasn't been a huge threat here in the States as of yet. Okay. Um, obviously, there had been some sort of issue happening in the Hawaiian state, but... I'll bring them in for interviews mm -hmm. and give them a budget, tell them I want a security team, tell them I need things to start... <coughs> Oh my God! They've actually blocked being more controlled in and on their internet connection. I I bet it timed out. No, they blocked it. Okay, I'll. Yeah, I don't need to confirm it. You didn't read to the end of the sentence. <laughs> They blocked it. No, um, they'll probably throw some numbers right, around. Frankly, to get a basic, um, just okay. guards. What is it? You have two security guards, but they're mostly just checkpoint guards at the yep. front. They indicate when people leave, what's going on, other things of that nature. To get routine um, uh, security, kind of roaming the um, grounds. Um, then some adequate detection equipment, other things of that nature, the type of stuff that MI5 has. Um, you're looking at not a huge investiture, but probably somewhere around the. Um, Lines of, uh, I want to say, maybe $20,000 a year for additional staff member. And, of course, they would handle some of the hiring yep. and they would go through you. But individuals that would be capable of handling this, strong-willed, um, definitely loyalty. And they make sure that stuff like this. <laughs> dimensional glasses. Well, yes. the equipment is in yep. the budget, and they imagine that you might be getting it from MI5, but you could yep. develop your own tech for them to use here at yep. the facility. Um, but you're looking at probably about four to five man group that, what is it, you know, you always have two to three people here in addition to your normal guards that yep. are patrolling the ground, uh, and they could bring, what is it, you could either develop weapons, or is it have spare weapons here for them, like the gyrock rounds or things of that nature, um, or simple Sears catalog weaponry, they get so and so forth. Ring, 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 ring. Yes, yes. What were the other items on that list that you passed me? Well, it just occurred to me that if you're not, you know, militarizing and hardening your bunker, you know, eventually 
the blue Hades or Somebody's gonna come take the crazy you. people are going to come take you out because you're going to figure, hey, you know, geez, this guy here, he's working to get stuff across supplies to our enemies, and hey, this other chick over here, she's, you know, manufacturing stuff for the one our of the enemies. Good, one of the things going for your facility right now is it's in a relatively <laughs> undeveloped sand, sandy kind of soil area where really nothing's being developed. Uh Unless somebody knew, like somebody's on a road, and they're like, "Oh, this isn't road. This is public. Or is it, this is a private driveway." And you're like, "Oh shit, we missed the turnoff way back there." You're right. Yeah, I can't imagine people with mystical resources will be yep. able to actually divine one, your area. <laughs> well, I, I'm just saying that's one of the things that's yep. working for is yep. really, there's not a lot of people that are aware of the facility. Um, one thing that Doctor Verus had said that he had uh, t- well, talked to you about the development of these um, what the hell is it alchemical. Uh, vital essence generators is he had never wanted to set up too many running at the yep. same time period in time because he didn't have really the means to protect a large quantity of this just sitting especially if somebody had long range detection abilities they're like oh there's three imagine what you guys would do if you found 400 quintessence three miles away you're like let's go investigate that shit we're gonna roll it <laughs> yeah <laughs> this stuff has to get off premises as soon as it's manufactured well then why aren't you the expenses that you uh, manufacturing facility that can use quintessence and turn it into other things that are not now detectable. Well, I'm right assuming outside. you're giving some of it. If you remember, the, the chantry since you had paid like extra that. and you're having Gabriel Bruce set up a lot of these things, uh, the uh, containers now are built from thomium, and there's very little leakage. Um, what the hell is that? Especially with resonance. The resonances are constantly maintained and cleaned up because there is a dead resonance of killing yep. all these. Um, oh, it's it's not only algae. I should say it's more of a primordial kind of mix. You're looking at various bacteria, archaea, um, just this primordial soup that's continually turned over. They don't and then just it's pump that into the creek. Yeah, you know, <laughs> that gets strained out. That was one of the issues earlier. Is um, what is no, it? When, no, no, Erickson was crazy. It's just it's when not Barton a started developing. That. When Barton started that developing crap. that, I had told him that. Theoretically, over time, vital essence might get in the sewage system. Then you might be dealing with fire rats from the Princess Bride. You're like, oh, they're eating the turds down there, and they're growing big. <laughs> that might be an issue in the future. <laughs> We're like, that's a huge fly. He stops on the pipes so and points down more. <laughs> yep. So that's being cleaned up pretty precisely. I mean, if you were, could you imagine that it might be built up over a significant period of time? But you're looking at 99.99 percent. Uh, however. It seems as though even though it's difficult to detect them in these means, there are obviously times where you're pumping it between systems and it's visible and something could detect that and be aware right. that it's in the area. And it is having, regardless of being in a completely uh, contained seal, it's having an effect on the weave. You don't know how specifically that works. Um, it could be that since this is kind of um, the, the things that everything is el- else is made up of, that there could be some sort of underlying effect that even though you can't see it, it's still having some effect on the local area here. So I don't want to play my, anymore. My suggestion <laughs> was, one, is your dimensional pocket actually hardened? You know, do you need to have your own dimensional buttresses like you've got around New York City? That's right. Yeah. You yeah. do You do have one. It's this essentially the small workspace where you develop crystal premium. It wasn't intentionally <coughs> meant to keep things out. Charts. It was meant to keep Charts. things inside, but it works the same way. Can I put another dimensional buffler like they have around New York City? Put like you know five, six of these bufflers around my base and turn them on. Your base, uh, the physical grounds that your base is mostly used of, uh, generally, yeah. The you do have quite a bit of um, acreage, so you'd have to put up some sort of system. But you could easily throw something up like what um, um, Bauer did, where they had like an extra. Uh, transformer transformer on the telephone lines in the yeah. region, and you could keep that powered. It would require a significant portion of power, but your current muon reactor that you built with Dusk should be easily able to power that with 10% of its power output. So instead of idling at 30, you'd be idling around 40%. It helps protect the base from spiritual things. Done. Right. And then the other thought I had, the other suggestion is... Make some Lux make cannons. A, make a deal with the Chantry. Yeah. That they can bring... Because they've got compromised security. They can bring some of their manufacturers of magic items on site, and they can use your quintessence immediately to turn it into magical permanent glyphs. So you can keep your production up or maybe even ramp it up more. (coughs) In addition, because now they've got manufacturing there, they should be interested in wanting to provide some magical muscle. Right. Yep. And I was also thinking that some of the things they could be making, you could incorporate into your power armor quite easily, like mental wards or... The Father, Son, the Holy Ghost, anti-magic wards. This is techie man. <coughs> Are you really going to try and get him to put magic in there? 
Sure, you take a piece of armor and you engrave a symbol on it and you have them enchant it. Or you have the plus two strength or whatever. Or not that, but protection against mystical energies, right? Yeah. You've got wind up power armor for your extra strength. You don't need extra strength, but you need you guys to all be dominated by mental power. Somebody can yep. go in there and take them all over or hit them with lightning bolts or, or some other magical means, right? Yep. So there's yep. more no, of that, but you guys have <coughs> have actually come across creatures in power like power right. type armor before and have bypassed it using means of magic. Exactly. I totally decimated them. <laughs> So while, while they're talking so about that, question what I'm for thinking you. is, you could yep. have like a so jumpsuit that I theoretically, wear, if I want to make a magic taser, mystical I, I will explain how this works. Into it, like I want it to shoot out and have like a primal conduit, so, that they don't get so it has the initial power, and it sets and off a primal conduit, <coughs> and then the primal conduit sets off like a lightning bolt. So it's sucking their primal energy into a lightning bolt, which is hitting them. Would that be possible? It, you could say, it's right, possible. It'd be tricky here, to enchant. Set up your you base. Think. We integrate our security. I'll give you some more of the quintessence, and in addition, I want you to enchant. With Thumb Tech, you might be able to make some sort of projectile that hits and then draws <coughs> and the electrocutes. It wouldn't be so much of a lightning bolt as a, um, a stun gun prod that would be the person going off. I can't, off, I can't yeah. make it happen. Potentially, so, magic Fact, taser. Maybe they're going to strangle the cat. What would happen is, say you made some sort of crossbow bolt with the device attached near the end. This hits the target, starts to drain quintessence, and then generates an electrical charge for quintessence. He totally is a lawyer. That could be done with Thom Tech. Would it be like able to take out a deep he one? Beat you up. He did. That's it sad. depends he on how off, I'm able go you're able to make it from in the first Not place. You are enough. aware that deep ones heavily use um, deflect harm type spells, so physical projectiles sometimes don't get to them. Mrs. E told me how to get rid of my parents. Unless they're made out of random crystal. Well, <clears throat> you're not transfer sure. It to you a, haven't had that uh, much experience deep fighting one deep ones. Done. And walk away. You just have to join random idea. I'm just curious. No, she said she just showed me how to do it. I'm sure horrible things happen to the recipient of my paradox, but <laughs> <sighs> it shouldn't matter. Angus has already walked past paradox. I'll try to contact the Hague. I mean the Chantry. Okay. <gasps> Larson, Michael, Michael, Larson. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, ultimately, it probably does. Uh, and then that's where you hire the soldiers, put them in their armor, so you get. So we start into the next around. week here. Okay. Um, it would probably take about two to three hours to get in contact with them. Um, every time you're calling the chantry, you're only calling one of their relay points outside, so a bookshop in Massachusetts. And then they go in, they send a runner. He ultimately, after a couple hours, gets in contact with uh, Michael Larson. That's not always possible, but often uh, you guys have done work with Michael Larson before. So you get into contact with them after a few hours. They'll call back at your residence. You need your own quick reactionary force. They're going to live here. They're going to make stuff for themselves and for me. No, but that's what your soldiers in power armor are for. Yeah. yeah. I'm trying, man. Just remember what inside the chantry looked like, right? Death. Yep. <laughs> now, imagine your house with Hubby All Riker. Yep. Death. Yes. That'd be horrible. Even more so, though, because right now your compound is like soft butter. <laughs> <laughs> the people that got through were relatively um, low-priority threats, and they did quite a bit of damage to the yeah. initiates. But yeah, in a similar circumstance, as a similar type force, it probably would take less than five minutes for the entire site to be rolled over and there'd just be a smoking <coughs> crater. So, yeah. al alternate idea... I tried to paint that for picture for me. <laughs> alternate idea... B, I'll take it by your silence so that you fully envision what I'm painting for you. <laughs> For short-term yep. defense, B. Yep. So here's an idea for you. It's kind of like an oh shit. So you have all of your people carry around like a little device, which is a phase out, which puts them in like the near umbra, or something like that, just out of the current dimension. I guarantee and you, Jason Eichel is going to direct people to the gate room if that shit happens. <laughs> no, no, no. This would have They'll to be like an immediate. <laughs> and then you set off like a one of your nuclear devices that you know how to make. So all of your personnel are safe. Boom. It's not a nuclear device. It's a cross-bridge particle device. And the only problem is if they phase out, your cross-bridge particle device nukes everything in that dimension, too. Right, right. Okay. So, yeah. Well, but they think they're safe. Yeah, they think they're safe. <laughs> We're safe. She wouldn't do anything to risk. <laughs> you forget what I'm saying, though. You have the technology to phase people out, and yep. then as an oh shit, you could clear... All the attacking force away. I'm gonna just try but to hire people. She totally decimated our infrastructure. I understand that, but maybe you don't want them to take it over. I why why not just hire these devices? I, <laughs> <laughs> I imagine there's gonna be a Cho Cho biting on one of the power conduits. Like, 
Why not just hire soldiers to defend the place instead of being... I thought you were going to go with it. All their people should be armed with bullets with lightning sickles, and if they shot them, you could spear the lightning. <laughs> 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 you fooled me with the dimensional twist. <laughs> there would be a lot of very brainy researchers sitting there with a gun like, I don't know about this. <laughs> they really shoot it. <laughs> There's going to be one person a week that shot themselves in the leg with a I'm lightning bolt. take care of the rest. <laughs> No, they wouldn't actually shoot themselves as a lightning bolt. They gotta wait for him to show up and activate it. <laughs> yep, exactly. So and it's safer. Exactly. I'm sure your power won't, d- won't be diminished over more targets. All right. When I get hold of Michael Larson, yep, I tell him that I have some quintessence for him, free of charge. But I need. Uh, I would like to set up an association between our two groups. You can set up negotiations for that. Um, he says this is what you were talking about before. You were willing to, was it, uh, donate um, vital essence to the cause? Yep, I still am. I'll bring it by when we talk. All right. Uh, he says if it's a larger quantity, um, and a larger quantity, oh, yeah, he'd shit. say is probably ten times what you guys had took um, from the facility on the How way out. How many we take it from the facility on the way well, out? 40 or 50? 40 or 50. Oh, so this is nothing, then. Um, okay. Well... Keep in well, mind, that's how much you're keep making in mind a that, week. Yeah, that's yeah. per week once this is all up yeah. and running. Um, Base guy, go and try to talk to him in person. I tell him I'm going to be rolling out 17 quintessence above and beyond every week. He says if, if you can continue that rate, he could greatly use it in various projects. He, of course, would have somebody else um, be delegating where that's going to, but usually it's primarily used on combating the um, rapine storm in China. I tell them that what I want is people at my facility making things out of the contestants that rolls off the assembly line, and they're willing to help defend it against mystical attacks. Just, and say, just say 20. If they're using it, I'll give you three of mine. Okay. And some of this quintessence I'm going to want, or some of the things that they do, I want them to do for me, like I want them to make... Helmets that my workers can wear that will protect them from magical attacks, mental okay. attacks. I want them. He's to willing to provide a, a mystical security detail at your facility. He will tell you that he doesn't want any of the. I suppose they're um, skilled enchanters working off site. It would be more secure to bring the quintessence, at least uh, to the chantry, because he tells you that essentially they have a large node, a a few large nodes within the Chantry, in which it is easier and safer to enchant in the confines than it would be at a facility like your place. However, he's willing to put the detail permanent basis at your facility and then they would be guarding your facility and he would send an additional team to pick up resources and move them. Are they going to be willing to do some things for me, like make these magical helmets for me that can protect my workers from mental ensorcelments? He says that they, the security detail could potentially have some ability to do enchantments. However, he says that you could ask for those items to be sent to the Chantry and then them shipped back out. What he's okay. offering you is security forces. Okay. His better enchanters are safer within his Chantry at the time being. And they're in right. areas that are more malleable to the en- actual process. Yes, the they, there's far less likelihood. I mean, you, is, you are aware that there are certain dimensions where paradox just doesn't occur like right. it should. So you imagine if they had set up, and there were special rooms in which you guys trained, where it never felt as though you guys right. had set anything up. So in those type of circumstances, if you fuck up, they're just like, well, damn, I have to make a new one. Yeah, It's not like the, the world is um, ending. Or, Can he see to it that these quintessences are brought off site when they roll off the assembly line? Yeah, that should be fairly quickly. The armored truck um, comes. <laughs> he would say, are, are you adverse to... Um, he could clean up the resonances, but I mean for certain locations that the Chantry use, like their entry points, over time it does affect the local area, so it might be known that if somebody's rolling through the area that there is a mystical site nearby. The same way where Dusty can come across and he just knows certain towns, or just like eh, for whatever reason this area is a lot softer than normal and he... You don't think that's just because of the way New York and a few other towns are. You think it's because of the inhabitants there are doing something that's actively changing it. And you're aware that there's a lot of fae, uh, vampires, werewolves, all sorts of stuff that's happening in New York. Even Red Hook, the, the demon um, cults there, <coughs> so are most likely causing some sort of right. disturbance. So that 
over time periods, and he's talking about years that could counteroffer idea lead. Who is it? Would take several years after that stopping to happen until it becomes mundane. And like you had seen in certain facilities, like the Yith site or even your compound, it's fairly sterile. There doesn't seem to be anything mystical there. And if you ever look for it, it doesn't. It, it, it feels as though there's nothing, no nodes there. There's no mystical means. There's no evidence of anything ever living or mystical tracks, if you will. So Veruth, over time, that could do that. That's if they transport it out mystically, is what you're saying. Yep, they could set up some sort of. Um, so they could set up some sort of. Um, land um, transport but um, I suppose that that's not their best means they might actually try to contact Bauer and set up some sort of defense that way so, so, okay the way Verus was able to like take in more quintessence than he could hold permanently yes so what if he just like has his enchanter you know it's his day tr- it's his lunch break he goes over to B's facility I take five and then I walk back because you can detect for a little while that someone with quint- like a ton of quintessents walked by, but that's less permanent and wouldn't leave as much residue as... Now, Dr. Verus is a different matter because he has very powerful enchantments that somehow shroud his um, well, pattern I, coming I just, out. Theoretically, just, he could move a large amount without it being detected, but... I'm just saying, use, what if they have quintessence mules? That could be done. I uh, mean, that's what they're talking about with... They would not be putting in their person. That would be slightly more dangerous. They'd be putting in sealed, protected containers, but then they'd be physically moving it cross-country, at which point in time they're liable to things like accidents or right. what happens if a drunk... So they leave a trail of... Yeah, so many time magic walk through this area. They do it all the time. Every not day. not just more so... Why don't you entrance you know, down the block? Not too much, but... Then you're risking things like, well, a drunk guy hit them on a road and ultimately, con- what is it, cracked a vial that's holding 300 quintessence. That doesn't just immediate. all of it's not going to evaporate. It's going to soak into the nearby area, and that may have some effects. Well, that's, that's, that's kind of the Chantry's problem, though, future. right? We don't need to yep. role play how they're getting the quintessence. All right. Michael Larson's fairly careful. He's just making you aware of yeah. things that could occur. This might, for your foreseeable future, This none of this stuff might ever happen. Okay. It just every once in a while, something I says might <laughs> say does happen. That way, I don't come back. And, oh, you mean that happened? I wouldn't have done that if I knew about that. There's no way I'm going to retroactively go back two years. All right. So All right. Build a chantry entrance nearby. If you can build a chantry entrance, ec- awesome. they wouldn't be actually building a chantry entrance. They'd be just using uh, a uh, temporary uh, teleportation site, similar to what um, the professor has up at her compound, and they'd be using that. It's just over time, yep. somebody in the area might be detect like there's actually is a soft spot. So like when Hunter goes to towns and he's like, well, I've like detected a few things here. Or there might be a gate yep. here. That's now a location where Hunter might be able to go out in this barren area and like actually there is a weird location over here. All right, I make sure that that location is on my new strip of land that goes out to Trevor's place. That's easily done. <laughs> I try to put a bunch of trees between my facility and where this teleportation spot is. Yep, you can plant trees there. All right, awesome. It's a dark forest. Dark forest, <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a four, four, it a four by five acre forest. That's where they can teleport in and out. Okay. Um, he'll set that up with you. Um, he... If you need somebody immediately to uh, transport the the amount that you I have, I brought them with. I say, he says okay. they come in vials when I pump them on or yeah. whatever they come. He in. says that you aren't really at risk of the detection if it remains under probably about thirty. Um, and of course, there's close range. If somebody is, you say you come across a mystical mugger, um, that's an issue. But um, when he's talking oh, about larger amounts, you're needing at least thirty or more before it's going to be somewhat detectable from long range. And then you're going to need large quantities, like 300 or more, before it's something that's like, there's obviously something weird over there. All right. And that's like things like, um, uh, what the hell is it? You'd imagine like the, uh, was it the location that you'd found near the lock in Scotland, where there was some sort of site, looked like a fair amount of quintessence was channeled into some sort of Cthulhu or star spawn okay. uh, thing. And that would probably be detectable from long range. All right. The thing to keep in mind with all the Chantry magics, it's all basically symbol based. Yep. And so you could hire mundane tailors uh, from the Irish to have them set up a sweatshop in your facility, mm-hmm. sewing the symbols that you want into the clothing you want, which then goes off to the Chantry, which then gets the symbols permanently. The, the Chantry shop. spells are fairly easy to do that. The Mu sigils are a little bit of a different matter regarding right, a totally two dimensional. Yeah. 
Um, but I was just talking about the stuff that we kind of know, the meal being somewhat unknown yep. at this point. The Chantry is fairly standardized if that's right. uh, what is it, one of their main benefits. You know, so you could have jumpsuits with, I got my mental ward, I got a primal ward, I got an anti-magic ward on my back. You know. That's what I want, man. I got, okay. you know, can I get that set up so I can start getting stock uniforms for my troops? Okay. With mental wards and, and primal wards. And Your researchers need mental wards. wards. Right. You could ask them for, here's, you know. Give me mental a wards is the most important. Give me a, well, that's one thing if you're going to yep. deal with insanity, but if I'm just going to come in there and hit you with lightning bolts, say, yep. you probably want to have some you know, like energy wards. Energy wards, or, you know, you get a spirit wards, and da 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 Yeah. Uh, what is it? Initially, uh, for the stuff that you would be creating, he would charge you a discounted rate. In the future, when you start donating a sufficient quantity, then they probably, they he'll tell you that they won't really... Um, matter is anymore, but so far you'd be requesting enchantments and all this stuff's going back to your own crew. Yeah. So they would handle that as though you're purchasing magical equipment. That's fine. I need it. The thing is, though, is you're, you've self-limited yourself 40 quintessence a week. Because you don't have proper storage facilities for it, which I get. But you if, you, <laughs> if you can improve your pipeline to get it off-site quicker with less so, residue, so you're concerned can about cascade more systems. You could make more. Yeah, you no. could make so, a hundred contestants a week. Right. So you're concerned about not having too much on-site, and every time you give me my six, I'm just like, I go into the little room where I do enchantments. <laughs> yeah, I <hear> you. <laughs> no, it's like this. <laughs> yeah. Just like uh, Doctor Bruce has set up a very clean system regarding it. It's just. Um, when that match is generated, even if you were producing close to 100 a week, there would be some evidence because the weave yep. changes because they all kind of cycle. So like every few days, you'd have to have some sort of system where you're getting it up. All of these different segments are cycling in different time periods because yep. they're all... Yeah. I give you the unit when it's done, but it's like it's at ten percent, twenty percent, all throughout the week. So there's right. a huge amount that is just in processing yep. Yep. that can't be really dealt with. Yeah. Um, but I'm just saying that you could, and if you had the defenses, you know, so maybe it shows up a little bit. The contractor Again, said eight facility. days. It's been and a if you can how secure far, your right? dimension, doesn't right really show up. The, oh, right. so I'm since when you got that started, it's only been a week right. so far. So maybe you don't wrap up now. Um, there's two more weeks, I'm I think, saying, before they were the finished with everything. You need your own little army. Was, you it, was it three weeks? Not just hiring a couple guys. I think it was three weeks. I thought three weeks was what I was thinking. Combat regiment. But I think you said it would be last. Each one of those guys hires a squad. I think it was going to take about three weeks based on what you were paying them. I would think you'd um, the Soil is a little bit harder than normal just because it's later in the year. It's December. Two more weeks. Um, so two more weeks from this time period. Um, and, of course, uh, they said the same thing. You didn't want them to set up. You had them throw in a septic system, but, of course, there's no power running out to this site. Um, I, you, know, I, you don't have a mailbox. You don't have a road access right now. Your land grant would allow you some sort of leeway through B's facility to get here. but You said the strip of land was... Touching some road on one on side, and I said I wanted that side. Guys with so I, I had a way of getting there. I think I said it was touching a creek on one side. Mundane and magical. Yeah. I'll, I'll I'll check my my audio from last week. I thought it was a creek. That I, was I had a method of access into this park. Yep, I, I thought it was through. You have a leeway through B's facility, at least on the the border of her area. She has was there's a road which you can gain yeah. access to your own. Property. Okay. It is technically a private driveway, but you have legal rights to use it to get to your facility. Um, is your facility a little shanty on the woods? No, he has a four by five, like four by two or four by five acres out there okay. off of B's facility. So you have yeah. kind of road access back here, B, and then you have kind of a private drive. Then you have your main facility, and then the remnants of the dark fluid arrays. Walter Riker's been spending time getting those back up and running. But um, obviously he's been, he goes from t project to project to project. Um, and then you had gained an additional amount of property back here. I had mentioned in the far past that there was a creek really far back out, and that was about it. And that little <laughs> amount of land that you got, that sliver, that narrow sliver that moves away, Barton has the tip of it out here that touches the creek, and then you have the sliver that's up here leading to it. And then the easement would be from your property. Yep. He can use this road to get out there. All right. Basically, a backup teleport bunker was what I was thinking. Okay, I don't know what you're doing. With it. Um, I would have told you it was a backup. So this would take. I would say talking to security guards and things like that's taken up two of your days. Okay. Uh, at this point in time, there would be um, the 
Christmas party with uh, Walter Riker and that. Um, he would be back. He talks about the various projects he's working on with the, um, the transatlantic gate system. He's really hopeful. So far, they haven't had any issues with any kind of uh, at least detectable radiation from using the different phased uh, gate system. And as I'd mentioned before, it uses a different system that you guys use to use their gate room because this runs on pure dark fluid and the amount of power or dark fluid you would require to run that transatlantic gate would not be possible. Um, so it uses a different types of uh, phased system that draws far less power. It's just not as tested. Right. I give him a pair of mystical glasses that detect <laughs> spirits. <laughs> And then, unfortunately, that's what I give all my friends. Okay. It's not... You're coming with a scientific background. It's not really spirits. You're detecting heavy particle back... Or was sure. it heavy um, crossbridge particles? Uh, yeah. And the biometrics is... Uh, was it glasses or a lens? <clears throat> it can be either. It could be clip-ons. It could be flip-downs. It could be goggles. And the biometrics would so most likely be... what you'd be most likely to want, and that's what I give you. And the biometrics would be something like um, electroreception, much like a shark uses, where you're able to detect electrical fields within moving muscle tissue, but you might get some false positives on large power cables or things of that nature. The ones I'm making for you guys are just for the unpowered dimensional crossbridge particles. Crossbridge particles. Okay. So I'm not giving you the bio signs. So right. just go by days right now. So your character had been reading, uh, doing those various projects. Mm -hmm. um, Mrs. Urquhart would bring you um, in the next day a uh, book that it seems as though she has kind of bound herself. It's, it's in paper. It's just there's no binding or anything. It's just kind of tied together with twine. Okay. Um, the name of it is the uh, uh, Morminian Codex. Um, she says that uh, she knows that you and Angus are going to be heading back to the States. Um, and I'm assuming you at some point in time told her you, uh, B had talked to MI, not MI5, but... Um, Rainbow the Water the Reclamation. Bauer, Rainbow. the yep. Bureau of Water Reclamation. Uh, she would tell you, it was that she would be very appreciative if you could end up hand-delivering this to um, whoever you were talking to. It was most likely um, Colonel Ash Smith. Okay. Um, otherwise, she tells you there's various information. You can read over it, but it details various... Um, tactics to take with the was it the creatures that are there um, technologies that she's aware of that um, Bauer ha possesses that may be used in the fight um, general was it land strategy um, projections and other general demonic fighting tactics okay. that could be used in this particular fight she even has as much as she feels confident with informing them about she tells that, the, as she had said before, that the main force is required to go in exceptionally strong. Um, she's looking at, from what she details, probably close to a small uh, brigade, uh, close to about one-third of um, the 42nd Infantry's full forces. However, she believes that that would draw the vast majority of the demonic forces, allowing, she would say, a, a tactical team to secure the objective, hopefully within a few hours, if not an hour. So does this have your battle plans? And she says that... Or sketches of your battle plans? Yes. Uh, you can go through it with her. Do you have any strategy land? I have tactics. Um, I don't believe I have strategy you land. You can give me a default on tactics. Let's see what those dwarves taught me. They didn't teach dwarven axes cannons <laughs> to shoot that way. Well, you were a bad learner. I am. 15, so I fail by 6. I'm like, yes, yes. I see what you're saying, yes. It's fairly yes. complex. <laughs> it does look like she has some sort of military background. Yeah. You're vaguely aware that if she, has been, <laughs> she had been um, active in the uh, German military yes, in the yes, First War. Bolts go that way. There's detailed um, accounts of land and air strategy. Um, she uh, details certain what she would count as um, vital locations <coughs> for creatures like hunting horrors, <coughs> Uh, Fomori, Undead, Demons, Biaki, Dragoni, and Star, um, what is it, um, Saturn Cats. Um, apparently some of these demons do have unusual, um, vulnerable locations. And it's kind of not what you'd assume your standard locations are, but apparently there's certain bone structures or other things of that that what is it, prevent regeneration or outright cause them to stumble or falter. Um, she talks about the various um, technologies that 
Bauer uses, and it seems as though she knows a little bit more about some of the military technology that they use th than you do. She talks about auto walkers and twin birds, um, even apparently uh, tapping some sort of destroyer-class vessel called an Asgard um, in the fight. She has projections about how the, uh, the forces would move into the city after the nearby regions in New York City would be evacuated prior to this happening, and even ways of them penetrating the, the buttress um, without giving too much leeway for them to try to escape through. Uh, da, 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 da. She details again um, fairly simple methods to create the demon um, Bane poultice. And you're looking at St. John's Wart, other kind of unusual, a little bit hard to get, but um, relatively mundane. These are things that somebody could find some sort of contact or make, and they're not necessarily from what she details... Um, one stop hits, mm -hmm. but they're going to feel it. They're actually going to react to these bullets rather than getting hit with a bunch of 9 mil rounds and they just don't feel it. Uh, so a lot of overwhelming force could deal with this. And it seems like her main objective is to make a lot of hellfire and noise initially and then hopefully the tactical team would accomplish his objective which at that point in time uh, Bauer would start to retreat and they would just pretty much cut their losses mm -hmm. um, at that point and then hopefully it seems as though she uh, believes that she can somehow consolidate or otherwise redirect the forces after Mormo has been cut off. Because apparently it seems as though she might be able to act as a, um, uh, what the hell is it? From how a lot of these demonic armies works, it seems as though she might be able to implement her own self as the leader for this particular group. And kind of think of like a 40k troll. Yeah. Another one comes in and, well, the head of the snake has been kind of cut off, but here's a new head. They might, she might be able to roll them back. Um, in addition to that, she and has. She would redeploy him back to. Drum yep, and she could theoretically call off the strike that's happening. Yep. And she uses a lot of interesting tactics uh, that you wouldn't necessarily um, initially consider. It seems as though a lot of the demons that the creatures that are being used, she even has drawn out maps of the region in the penumbra, as though she had seen it or somehow had some sort of information coming from there. But it seems as though um, taking some of the Fomori captured alive in certain points and pulling them backwards and slaughtering them or torturing them in other locations um, encourages bloodlust within the other demons so it's easier to encourage them to continue fighting on flanks they shouldn't continue to fight even if it's really tactically unsound for them to like well you shouldn't fight up the mountain however it seems as though there's ways for uncoordinated groups to be lured into really bad traps like that okay. and um, things of that nature she does also have in her plans uh, a rough idea of making from what the plans detail, um, it seems as though it's tried to be kept somewhat secret, at least for um, eyes only, giving the governing council, not the standard individual. But she does talk about two uh, heavy particle bombs, but she doesn't. It was a. It seems as though they're primarily decoys, but it's. Um, she has the means to provide demon bane charms that would make them very difficult, if not impossible, for the average demonic force to mystically move them or otherwise interfere with them. They would literally have to get up to them and smash them. Meaning, they suppose they might seem as more threats than normal. They look like real bombs that are rolling into the city that can't be just teleported away. Um, and apparently all of this is just meant to keep them distracted and continue to fight and fever up the bloodlust until whatever team can kind of deal with the other situation. From there she never details, at least you don't get the idea of how this other tactical team is supposed to be deployed. You don't even see any of the indications where the tactical team is supposed to even go in with them. Um, so is this something, the tactical team here, is this something you envision the Abduro group participating in and are you she would are, imagine are, are that you, you a member of the tactical team as well or a participant of the, uh, as being a tactical team she says that yes ultimately she'll be need to be there to corral the forces near the yep. end of the fight she fears is that if she goes in initially she might cause the mormo to act differently just because that means that you now have somebody that knows a lot of how your operation runs um, so she's hoping that... So the kind of the, the tactical team would go in first without you, and then you would quickly follow maybe after yes. the battle is joined. Something. That's her idea, at least. Okay. okay. Um, from what she'll tell you is the objective for, I suppose, your tactical team, uh, from what she's aware that Angus has um, agreed to go with, as well as her son, Angley. Um, she won't stop them, but she doesn't... She 
feels as though you need to get your A game together and make sure that there's no casualties caused. Um, however, she does have equipment for you um, to use. She had mentioned things like witch charms and demon bane charms as well. Mm -hmm. um, she had mentioned something called a um, uh, animus baptismal. Yep. Um, she has mentioned things like compounds that somehow penetrated or damaged the uh, shields that a lot of these elite demons are using, including Mormo, who is supposedly a fallen angel capable of bending light to her mm -hmm. whim. So you um, get some primal darkness or... She had mentioned... Earth. At least Zykes had mentioned specifically yep. before Primal Darkness, and supposedly if the two compounds come together, they negate each other. Mm -hmm. um, not only that, but apparently a demon of her class that was injured and somehow infected with um, something ancient or of the old world, uh, Mrs. Urquhart will detail it's the Carpenter's Blood in this particular instance, that she'll be temporarily weakened, and that's the only objective that the tactical team has acquired, is literally to somehow either cut her or... Uh, damage her with something covered in the blood. At which point in time she'll um, come in to assist. Okay. Kind of close the deal, so to speak. The yeah, the final swoop, if you will. Okay. Um, All right. Well, I'd be however, she can't detail too much more, just because she will mention that some of the more impertinent details of this plan. There are demons that can look into the hearts of men. Mm -hmm. So if your average individual is out there that knows the whole game plan, obviously. Yeah. They're going to be spilling the beans. Gotcha. In, in, inadvertently so. They would never know it, but right. a smart enough demon might go back and tell. Yeah. So, taking all of this, you want me to share it with the Colonel Ash Smith, which I'd be yep. more than happy to do. Um, and she's entrusting you with the physical copy of this book. She hasn't made another one yet. Okay. And she tells you it's pretty much, for the most part, all in her head, but um, it would take her another week to redraw all these maps out and everything else. All right. I will... You might uttermost to ensure that that doesn't happen. Um, lastly, she will say that she has come across some new equipment from what her, what she says is her men have told her. Okay. Um, and she says that she has found some ancient weaponry that may be of use, but it might require you to learn how to use old shields, swords, and flails. Yeah. How about axes? You got any axes? Because I already she know how to so. use those. I already know how to use those. I'm well trained by the dwarves. Mm -hmm. Schwartelheim. <laughs> she doesn't know the exact um, <laughs> quantity as of yet. Okay. However, from what she is understand, oh, is it? From what she understands, a recent expedition dealing with. I suppose she'll ask you about if you know anything about Camelot lore. Oh, I was wondering. I had, had heard rumors. Someone had told me that perhaps uh, Merlin's tomb was around. She says nearby. she's heard things like that too. Rumors I'd heard. But she so. smiles when she says yeah, that. Of course. Which she like says that it appears that she might have came across um, ancient equipment that is still very magically powerful and hasn't rotted away through the sands of time. Okay. It's still fairly effective against fairy magic and demonic magics. Okay. We'd be, of course, always indebted to you for any. Uh, she says no problem. It's be so. used in the, the yep. war effort. Well, this is all good stuff here. I was hoping to take perhaps a picnic off uh, your grounds here for a moment. There's a little bastard cat I need to go talk to. No. <laughs> She's fine. Yeah. Oh, I forgot about Yodi Cat. The area is probably <laughs> about five miles, as I said before, five to ten miles outside of Drum and Drocket. You come across fetishes and other things of that nature. I would and ask her what the threat level is outside her warded area. Is there you know, can't wait to hear a high level of teams? His response of being called a bastard cat. Hybrids. So I'm sure he's heard. She says that not too far out of Drum and Drocket, there is a, um, what have you, a uh, Deep One City. Or it's not out of Drum and Drocket, it's out it's of um, Stonehaven. Um, so probably about, I should say, 25 miles from here. Okay. So anything outside the city grounds could be liable. Um, okay. th she'll tell you that there are other, what is it, habited towns around here. Mm -hmm. It's just this community is separate from those. Certainly. Okay. Thank you again for your time, as I always do, and then I'll go see if I can track down Don. Okay. Uh, basically, I'll give her my uh, tablecloth, ask her if she can pull out some equipment for me. Yep, she'll know. So I'll basically I get some of my guns pulled out, and I thank her. <clears throat> I'll go or get collect some provisions out of their pantry or whatever. Yep, they're uh, fairly well stocked. Yeah. Specifically, I'll make sure I get like a roast chicken and I get a whole thing of The only thing you will find unusual is you will see one or two kind of workers here. Um, it's probably a, um, what you would say is a groundskeeper and a um, cat doesn't eat food. He and a, souls. Yeah, a housekeeper. <laughs> they seem to be, they're probably from the town, but you've never seen 
I suppose outsiders inside the um, the manor. The Angus family has always been kind of even their ancestors have always kind of been seen ever since the issue with um, what the hell have you? I forgot the name of the creature. Um, Glocky. Glocky. Yeah, there you go. Um, ever since those times, there's always been a stigma around this family. Understandably so. They I mean, they, imagine being from a magical background like the um, Urquhart family, or even yourself. So over time, you're like, yeah, we don't like that Beatrice. She always looked weird science up there. And so, however, <laughs> that has drastically changed over the the recent right. days. People seem to be fairly comfortable around them. Um, you haven't seen anything okay. horribly evil in town, but. From some of the fetishes, it looks as though, I mean, they're deep one skulls or smashed in faces or things of that nature. You're not sure how exactly they're getting them, where it's they're getting them from. It's all in or a the big details. Line. It's Everything's fine. They're having a corn harvest and you can't find any of the adults. Everything looks to be fine, though. Exactly. It always starts with the corn harvest, I say. Okay. I get my roast chicken, a little thing of cream. I go out and try to get past the boundaries. Yep. There's nothing physically stopping you. I mean, there's yep. like old farm fencing and things like that, but yeah. Walking. Yep. You're got not Gertie in whatsoever. hand. Got my ammo on my hip. I feel like the good old days back before any magic. Mm-hmm. <laughs> on the lookout for, basically, I'll just kind of walk out in the countryside on the lookout mm-hmm. for deep ones and other hybrids or things, trying to avoid them. I'm not going to advertise my position. And I assume if the cat wants to talk to me, I'll show up. But All right. Not, you're eating the chicken, huh? But I brought a week's worth of food with me. That's and yes, delicious. I'll be eating the chicken. <laughs> That'll be good for a day or two. Um, probably after about two to three hours, you will see the cat on the distance. He is kind of just, uh, what is it, sitting on the fence. Okay. Um, I'll try to make my way that. You've that been direction. actively kind of watching, and you're not sure when he showed up. He is a bit of a puffy cat, but, I mean, he's usually about an acre or two away from you. Okay. Uh, yeah, you can. <laughs> oh, it's just pulled <laughs> up. It's boss. Puff- yeah, it's puffy cat. <laughs> I have to look at the picture and get in the mindset. I hear you. <laughs> uh, it's usually pretty far off. You're not sure if it's using that method you had saw before where it seems to jump off of high places and disappear. Yep. Um, but it is a cat, so it easily could have just snuck up, yep. um, even with a very good perception. Um, the cat will approach you. Um, what is it? You'll approach the cat. Yeah. It won't move away like it okay. has in the past. All right. I see you back. I am back. <clears throat> Do you have a name you're called by? Artemis. Artemis? Yes. Alright, Artemis. Should go with Yoda. Oh, he tells you that my cat name is. <laughs> <laughs> just so everyone knows, Ian just smacked himself in the face a few times, <laughs> then rubbed his bald top. <laughs> well, Artemis, uh, <clears throat> I feel we got off on a bit of a bad footing there. You're kind of a bit of an ass, and I suppose I probably deserve it because I'm a bit of an ass, too. Yeah, so. You only associated my kind with demons. <laughs> so uh, you asked me a question as far as what I, what am I looking for. <clears throat> I told you before, I'll just restate it. Basically, I'm looking for allies in, war, in defending humanity and helping humanity preserve their freedom. He understands. As far as why I'm seeking out Bass, basically I <clears throat> had a conversation with your ex-demon-worshipping priest who said, you know what? I didn't want to have to learn power by reading books, and so I found Bast. She wants to help fight uh, all the an- or bad things that uh, <clears throat> humanity is fighting. So you should totally go down to my cat soup kitchen and hang out and feed the cats and whatnot, and Bast will come and see you, and let's go knock back a few cold ones. So your response so that, is that's, blame job. That's the extent of what <clears throat> I've been told as far as what is required to <coughs> receive bass um, attention. I myself felt that it would be better to maybe go free some of her cats if it's true that they can talk, such as yourself, and there's wild ones that are imprisoned. I should go free them. So He'll tell you that, um, what have you, that it is a common practice for the student to learn the master's language. However, yeah. since we're not in any sort of relationship like that, I felt it was easier just to talk to you directly. Well, it'd probably get through my Not every cat way. takes the time required to learn the human tongue. Well, it's inefficient. <laughs> unelegant. <laughs> I'm sure it is, and I appreciate what you're doing. So my question back to you is, that's what I want. Um, I have no idea other than, again, what I said from a brief priest. What does Bast want? What, he says what in ancient times, Bast was about merriment, enjoyment, partying, mm-hmm. uh, and... Uh, 
to keep the ancient evils at bay of the world. Okay. It is against our nature to associate with demons or haster, things of this nature. Haster? The dead god. Okay. The craziness that's right. happening across the world. Okay. How do you make me wonder, Hunter? You work with these demons. I understand that they're an ally to you, but what is their goal? What do they have in plan for this world? <clears throat> How does that align with that is your question. religious rights? Uh, <clears throat> I was never, never a very faithful Christian, so I don't think I technically have any evolved religion. So how would you even feel worshipping someone like the cat god? <clears throat> I've told you the extent that your priest had told me as far as what Bast wants. So perhaps you could tell me what Bast would require of me, and then I can tell you if I can fulfill that or not. He says that they're... I suppose their praying is a bit different from what one might expect. Uh, treating cats fairly, protecting them, uh, protecting others that are worshippers of Bast. But he'll tell you that worshipping Bast is so much, uh, was it more of living one's life to the fullest and protecting cats, uh, merriment. But you're still worshipping Bast in this way. It's just different from how most humans do it. Okay. Living life to the fullest. You're writing this down. Mm-hmm. Okay. He's gonna worship the Scottish. At least the Scottish. <laughs> no, wait. What is your list? Party, enjoy life, pet kitty. <laughs> exactly. Take it. Until you take it easy when you need to. All right. When you need to, which is <laughs> never. You work a haul. That should took the diss out apparently. <clears throat> he tells you it's not a difficult life, but. They expect you to be dedicated to the cause. Uh, and I would and they send you I would expect the same for wherever I was giving my allegiances to, so I have no problems with that. As far as my affiliations with Mrs. Eckhart and uh, it has more to do with her husband, he's a friend of mine. I feel somewhat obligated to help him deal with the situation he finds himself in as far as being married to a half demon werewolf. So <coughs> that's he kind understands, of the situation. Uh, People have strange friends. He only worries because you reek of demonic energies. Well, she does have interest in me, and I've been spending time on her properties, so I don't know if that has any not gonna mention effect. You're not going to mention your healed using... He believes vehicle. you're being followed by more than just himself. I, I think there's Zykes that's probably following me because, again, she has some interest in me as well as one of your other current priests. He um, says that... Professor. Bast worshippers come from all folds. He tells you that the professor genuinely has a love for cats, mm-hmm. while Jeb generally has a love for easy, it, <laughs> easygoing times and merriment. Yep. Yourself could be dedicated to the cause of keeping the old ones at bay. All of these are main pillars mm-hmm. to worshipping Bast. Yeah. <clears throat> into the third one, I could easily dedicate myself to that. <clears throat> so where do we go from here? He says uh, he doesn't require you to distance yourselves from the demons, just take heed. Mm-hmm. Uh, he will inform you of the um, aspects that you will be drawing. He will be providing you with a conduit to Bast. Mm-hmm. Um, he says that this is more of a probationary time period, but few fail the probationary time period. <laughs> <laughs> I do <laughs> laugh. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. I think that um, to myself. If he, he would tell my you, mind, <laughs> then he would know that. He would tell you that he, you would be his apprentice. Uh, he would expect you to learn his language. Uh, he'll occasionally talk to you in human tongue, but it is, I suppose, a tradition for you to learn his. And as sure. you said before, many allies and contacts that you might meet within the, the city of the cats or um, other agents in the field might not know human. Mm-hmm. Or he'll tell you that most understand it, but not no, all speak human it. English. Fair enough. So I've got a high-level paradox built up. We're out here in the middle of the wilds. There's deep ones and hybrids out wandering around. Do you want to just study out here in the countryside? I think I've gotten all I can from the current situation with the um, with Mrs. Eckhart. Mm-hmm. Um, so do you want to stand here? I have no means of taking myself elsewhere at this point in time until this paradox bleeds off. Mm. That is tricky. You've built up a lot of bad flow within your system. I have. Mm, Let us head to somewhere more civilized, to the south. Okay. 
Very well. well. As we travel, perhaps you can begin teaching me this language. Mm -hmm. He'll tell you that there's a road nearby, and he should be able to get one of those vehicles to stop. Okay. <laughs> well, I can stop the vehicle, too. All right. Um, ultimately, you guys will hitch so as you're back. learning this language, I'm just imagining the first thing, greeting, sniff my ass. <laughs> <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's, that's more, that's that's dogs. more dogs. <laughs> no, no, cats sniff each other all over, so... Yeah, I, but I, it's I, not specifically his butt. Yeah, right. No, but that, he'll talk about <laughs> eye contact and things of that nature, like, don't look me directly in the eye if I'm agitated. <laughs> and other strange, yeah. uh, delicate <laughs> was it, um, conversation pieces like that and understanding their body language. Um depending on how much time you end up spending, I'm assuming you can get at least the next day because we're two days in for the week. Yeah. Uh, you ultimately hitchhike back. Um, people are fairly started. You obviously, there's a lot of areas in um, the Great uh, Britain Isles that um, only occasional transport trucks move by. It seems like everyone's kind of moving by a caravan. If somebody needs to head to London or Bris who is it, um, Brisbane or what have you, they're wait for a larger convoy to move through, most likely assisted by MI5 or like a militia group in the re nearby region, and then move from there. It's almost like you're in um, a country where banditry is yeah. uh, commonplace. There are some pretty bad areas where the roads have been um, not only barricaded, but they've been literally torn up by some sort of mechanism to just allow people not to go down that roads anymore. Okay. And you have seen what appears to be strange tank marks. Um, other things of that nature. Marks. There are certain areas that you've occasionally seen um, where roads literally lead up near the edge of the um, British Isles, near more near the coast. You only come across this one time, but there's a road that literally drives straight into the ocean, and there's barricades up kind of off in the far distance. You can kind of see this from about a mile or two away. And you're like, where the hell does that road go off to in that valley? And there's just water. There's just water there. Um, and you can see what appears to be pretty drastic cliff sides in certain regions as though um, there was major geological um, change in the region. Okay. Um, but things are fairly desperate. I mean, it seems as though you're in the midst of uh, war-torn Russia. Yeah. Um, I will be people carrying. are very afraid to even go off in the forest by themselves. Okay. It seems as though food is a, um, um, the primary means of a trade. trade nowadays. Okay. Um, farmers are very cautious about tilling up land or other things like that. Even if they're in a safe zone, mm -hmm. there's no buffer if they're out by themselves and they come across something like right. a hybrid. Yeah. How are they going to deal with it? They have to get a lucky shot with a shotgun and hope that there's nothing else out there. Right. So I will be carrying Gertie. It'll be probably my only visible gun. Uh, the, the I, only I don't carry it in a threatening way. And if, okay. you know, Nobody would stop you. Everyone, he, Virtually everyone that looks like they're it, capable it, of carrying armed. a weapon is carrying a weapon. Okay. And there's organized militia groups mm -hmm. that... They're either organized with MI5 or MI5 isn't attempting right. to stop them in any particular way. And it seems as though a lot of temporary fortifications have been made on very high points of land, mountaintops, things of that nature, okay. um, near creeks and valleys and other things of that nature. Even if it's like a bog and it doesn't really go anywhere, there's such a stigma now close to any kind of watery territory that people just can't live there anymore. Okay. So you'll see things at high points on mountaintops and other things of that nature. There's temporary cities, and yeah, like I said, there's a lack of food, but yeah. there's slightly higher cheer that um, you've been hearing a lot of rumors about the transatlantic gate system, and there's a lot of food coming in from the Midwest and the United States through some sort of, what they'll say, a window through space, and nobody really knows how it works other than it's their one little bit of hope that they're holding on to right now. Yeah. Uh, MI5's been doing better and better in each particular fight the more that they learn how to fight these um, deep ones in open war but uh, like I mentioned in a previous session for every three battles that they win another eight kind of go south on them right okay I'd quickly share my food with desperate looking civilians along um, the way otherwise you would hear rumors about large creatures occasionally attacking um, cities or not not the main cities but in remote um, small farmsteads where I should say, like very ones. remote towns that are kind of near watery, uh, large bodies of water, either rivers or things of that nature, where there's only a handful of people that have kind of left mm -hmm. um, and are determined to keep their home or stay in that particular region. Um, the escapees have found that, what is it, have told stories of giant monsters that when they come upon shore, they literally start breaking it and sinking the land beneath them, yeah. like some sort of um, um, bulldozers or terraformers. Mm -hmm. And uh, they've described them as close to 50, more f 50 or plus feet, and the response usually is just to leave. They have seen <laughs> MI5 open up and take 
one of these creatures down with heavy bombardment from um, airships, but generally your standard militia would just leave. What can they do? The, it, the ground it. sinking. There's a 50-foot yep. monster that appears to be made out of moss and some sort of creature underneath. They can't tell. We need our Jaegers or whatever they call them, Pacific Rim. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, See, that's grim, but uh, the Great Isles are continuing to fight on. The first day of my travels... Um, obviously, I'll do whatever uh, Artemis uh, you know requests of me, but I will. Artemis doesn't talk in front of other people. Yeah. Um, you haven't learned terribly too much of the language. I'll allow you to put an asterisk next to body language if you have it. If not, you'll need to pick up body language. I think I have body language. That's a good start. Body language, I got it. You can put an asterisk next to it and it applies for you understand cat languages with body language. Okay. Um, and you're really broken right now, but for the most part, Artemis has taught you kind of a few maneuvering things like stop, go, here, Hello. there. Hello. Where is the bathroom? Um, I have a pencil. What have you. <laughs> so he communicates those things while you're um, okay. in the midst of other people. All right. When we do have some alone time, I'll ask him. Um, when you sleep that night, apparently Artemis, along with many other cats, are able to enter dreams. Okay. Um, and he'll tell you that they're, you're not in a dream world. He's merely entered your dreams, okay. but time works slightly different here. He's Often it's easier to train um, apprentices in their dreams, so you're actually learning how to cast your spells, but he knows how they should be cast. So... <laughs> <laughs> so I don't build a paradox. <laughs> it's like you're in a VR sim where you're able to do these things and learn applicable experience, but in a dream state. You don't want to cast new spells. That is awesome. All right, I continue teaching. The one question I have for him: so the dimensional shambler, dimensional shambler that's following He's me around. He smelt something following you. He said that it has been quite tricky to nail down. He only catches glimpses, but it's, he is fairly stealthy. It's heavily warded against detections, so it doesn't surprise me. So my question to you is that there were some additional weapons that uh, Mrs. Eckhart was going to loan us uh, or give to us for our cause. Is there an is issue that you see if I ask Zykes to relay a message to have her pass those to her husband that he would bring them to America for the coming offensive against Mormo? Um, he has no issue with you talking to demons. It's merely that you are slightly more vulnerable when in there, um, when you're... In their house? Yeah. <laughs> uh, not in their house, but you say when you're in your pre their presence, the increasing likelihood that you could become contaminated or infected by mm -hmm. their essences right. could happen. So I tell him about Mrs. Eckhart's, what she's basically said, that if I find myself in a position where I'm basically, I presume either dead or close to death, she's going to take me and combine my soul and turn me into a fomori. He says that you're not a full worshiper as of yet, but soon, provided every, was it, this works out uh, for both of us, um, he says that Bast would have laid claim to any particular body after there, <laughs> thereafter, and Mrs. Urquhart would have a difficult time enacting such an act. Oh, okay. Well, that's good to know. He says it doesn't... She might still try, but... Okay. Right. Well, it makes me happy to hear that I might not actually lose my humanity somehow, so... Good deal, good deal. All right. And so we wiggle like this. <laughs> I do my training. Okay. So... I yield the floor to Trevor. Um, he has... Mr. Farwell, you have the floor. I've sent... Uh, what is it? I've updated the cat list. Um, uh, so you can look, take a look at those spells, and those are some of the spells that you can learn from either the other two Bastites. Mm -hmm. um, sometime, um, what is it? Jeb can show you how to reach the, sit cat, what is it, the City of Cats. Mm -hmm. um, and there's actually some new spells on there specifically from um, Artemis. Okay. Uh, apparently he has an ability to use something like Transpose... But it only requires a gesture, but you need to build up speed. So either you need to develop sprinting speed, or you need to build up speed through jumping off a surface. So things like acrobatics can help you. <laughs> and you don't immediately transition to the new state. You have to surf the flow, as he says, okay. to make it to your destination. Move! Swim through the ethers! Swim through the ethers. And he has other spells on there. Um, you can tell that his focus is dealing with primal energies and spatial magics. 
All right. Mr. Frau, you have the floor. So you have two days so far. That's what the other PCs have done. Um, he would have probably brought you somewhere into London past the barricades uh, okay. where you could get food and um, there's context with MI5, but generally speaking, you'd be counted as kind of a refugee. Um, so there'd be food, sh what is it, um, soup kitchens, things of that nature where you could sleep or uh, get residency at. Um, any of the remaining, if pretty much anywhere you go to, all the inns are packed. Anyone with any kind of significant, um, um, anyone with any money can took up the original inns and their prices have started to kind of skyrocket as less land is available. I was fine to have so some place and crawl underneath it. There's cots and things of that for refugees. Right. Um, but I'm saying I'm willing to other. sleep outside too. Like okay. A park or wherever. You know. Alright, so what do you want to do with your two days? I wanted to learn the elemental stuff. Okay. I want so my elemental rock instead of a cat. Well, doesn't need like to I teach mentioned stage, before, it's um, while it's not necessarily a familiar, um, Dr. Bruce had told you that... I, just, I want it to be able to do stuff in, instead of learn stuff from it. Yep, but, uh, that's what he'll um, tell you, is he has something similar on his person. And if I can make more than one of them at the time, all the better. Yep, he's made multiple of these small spirit... Um, uh, what the hell is it? These golem-like creatures at the base. Uh, I can pull up that spell list here. All right. What he'd like to teach you first of all, um, so you can actually see what sort of spirits there are, at least the first process, uh, is dimensional sight. It's a type of rune which needs to be drawn over your eye. Um, generally how he activates it is through focus and once the eyelid closes it completes the rune. Um, he does have means of permanently tattooing these, but one needs to build up mental resiliency or sleep with uh, lead shelters over their eyes, because as soon as their eyes close, they would, of course, have dimensional sight. Um, but essentially, the, it's similar to what the Chantry type, was it, teaches, other than it's on a living canvas, and apparently these symbols interconnect to each other in an intricate way. Uh, but what do you teach you, first of all, is dimensional sight. And that would allow you to... The rune would act as a type of uh, dimensional eye that when the rune was complete, it would send the images to your brain. Some of the crawling sigils are different from the Chantry spells because... Does even opening for other things to get sent to your brain? It's only if you show if you have no alternatives. Not specifically. A bright enough um, dimensional burst might blind you in that instance where a normal human wouldn't be able to see it at all, but generally speaking, not more than anything else. Um, one of the main differences that you can see between his type of magic and others is it actually does use a lot of biochemistry. Um, you don't need to know a whole lot of it, but it definitely helps. It seems as though types of healing magic he knows are a mystical ability to, uh, what is it, a background in medicine, uh, diagnoses, uh, physiology allows him to use mystical means to really dial in specifically what he's doing, mend bones, uh, deconstruct uh, molecules that are attacking your system, deal with prions, types of stuff like that. It's fairly complex, but dimensional sight is not too hard to um, figure out. It would generally take about three days to learn that from him, uh, given his off time period, but it is an easy spell. Why are you just randomly throwing prions? It's kind of a rare, like it's known to cause... Two diseases, and those yeah. are the only instances in which they are known to the scientific community. But you throw them in there. Theoretically. Bruce knows about these. They're not going to be discovered well, for another I'm throwing off random 40 years, but Bruce Not necessarily knows. in this particular game's timeline. <laughs> and I was just throwing random things that might affect your system, and for whatever reason, that was in the top of my mind. So he uses mystical means to apply real-world sciences, as opposed to the, the orders, like, well, this is how you heal people. We don't know necessarily anything about your cell structure, but this is healing magic. Yeah. We look at your pattern. Yeah, they look at your <laughs> mystical pattern. Well, Gabriel Bruce is using mystical means to tell like, oh, there's something wrong with your red blood cells. Uh, so, if you want to, you, at the end of three days, can put a point into dimensional sight. Um, the how many, just, you know, I would have asked him before all the, like, 
What all do I need to be able to do this? To be able to do this, what he mentions is dimensional sight that will allow you to see, interact with the spirit world, I mean, even detect things like ghosts, but also um, spirits that are intrinsic in earth and water and air. Okay. Uh, from there, uh, you would need to be able to... Uh, I'm not sure. If it's too much trouble. Let me see here. Compel spirit. Um, it's a type of um, symbol drawing invocation, so it's actually much more close to what you would normally expect uh, from something like the chantry. Um, and it it allows you to force or move a spirit force in a physical way. Think of it kind of like um, what the hell is it? Uh, primal um, conduit. And then from there, you could learn the spirit shell. So you could create a permanent residence in this material plane for a spiritual entity. And of course the spirit shell, if you wanted to make it permanent, you'd need to know how to enchant. Which you do. So three spells. One easy, one average, one hard. And then you'd have to get experience with doing this of course, because you might so you come across a spirit and you're like, oh this one totally works. And you find out that in actuality it's some sort of bipolar fire spirit, and half the times he's really mellow, half the times he's not. Two Okay, I'll, I'll learn that. So. And let them have their. Hey, it's minus two. Okay. They have a day. So After that, you'd, he would right. probably say about a week or so. so you could end up learning yeah. um, compel like spirit, but it would have okay. direct means things of like trying to um, force that? out a spirit in somebody's so body. Um, okay. Ward yourself from so other you types of spirits in a primitive cool. way, um, or even in a crude way attempt to communicate with a spirit force. So there's other applications other than what. It's being used for here, it's yeah, just... It. Nope, rock goes with gravity hammers. <laughs> <laughs> yep. The same way with gravity ripple, um, the, it had been used heavily by um, Puddin to soften falls, move objects, things of that nature, but you've never seen the cats fly with it, which you've used it for that particular application. All right, so... I'm going to ask you a question before you answer. You may want to pause. Okay, okay. I will uh, pause the recording here. All right, we're uh, back recording here, and then Steve's walking away. <laughs> He's got no body. It's my turn, right? It's whoever wants to go. We can continue with Trevor. We can um, talk to what have you. I'm going to try to do research, but I will try to administer along with the administrator. Okay. Trying to focus on giving the facility more defensible. Okay. Because I can see that we're looking at serious things that if we got invaded everybody would be dead, we'd lose everything we can't have nice things Potentially, there's been some really bad hits to the Chantry recently, if similar sized forces hit here, I mean Gabor Bruce, you're aware ha has killed um, pure bloods before, but then he's just one guy yep. the, the rest of your researchers are brilliant in their fields but they're not combatants Right. Um, not only that but there's a little bit of a um, how things have worked for the last few years is anyone that was strange usually ultimately got let into the facility. So that could theoretically happen in the future where you're like, oh yeah, I'm with Beatrice, and then they roll into the facility, and then there you go. This has got to, we got to start putting the screws down, clamping down on things, security, et cetera, et cetera. So. Okay. It's easy enough. James I. Holt um, is fine with that decision. Um, you, you probably have more tactics than him, so you can give me a tactics roll. Okay. Fourteen. I got an eleven, so I made it by three. By three. Um, along with the people that you hired, um, how? What kind of security are you planning on looking at? From what you were told by Jason, not Jason Eichholt, but uh, Mark, uh, Michael Larson, he's going to give you five on-site mystical um, members who might be very capable of defending the site, but it depends on what kind of level. Because obviously, the chantry is defended way more than that. <coughs> MI5 might have more resources, but I mean, you guys. We're trying, I'm trying to put together an entire security team so that we don't just have like four guys and one of them's on duty at any time. Each of these four guys has got to hire a squad to work with them. Yep. And the same with these mystical people. They've got to be 
ready, and then we're going to start running drills. That's in part what the twenty five grand a year was um, talking about. Okay. Not only the um, a good chunk of that is um, the, the the senior people, but having a lot of new security coming in. Okay. Um, probably going to be heavily recruiting from um, MI. What is it? Um, Bauer um, individuals that have strong keen. What is it? Uh, strong uh, willpower are used to seeing some unusual things. Um, but, I mean, there's also things like putting up a fence with barbed wire and really basic yep. type stuff. Um, so you can start getting into that right now. And, you know, we do the mundane things too, but I also want to make the... Dimensional uh, buttresses? Yes, the dimensional buttresses. Because if we How elevated dimensionally, we'd have no hole. How did you want to set those up? Because your James Eichel could con have your people start to construct those. Um, what kind of infrastructure did you want? Did you want them buried? Did you want them set up on telephone poles that are kind of scattered throughout your facility? I think we want them buried or in some sort of reinforced structure so they can't just be shot mundanely easily. Okay. So if we could bury them. Yeah. I think buried is the best. Okay. Um, do you want to have... What the hell is it? Uh, from the reactor, you can have multiple lines kind of coming out. They'll have to dig up around a significant portion of the um, the um, property. It could be easier if you just put it in a relay, but then theoretically if some area, um, if two lot areas were destroyed, or what have you, if two reactors on each side uh, were destroyed, then the ones on the far end would never receive power. Right. Um, but... They can end up doing a kind of a star pattern out to the, each one of these facilities. Is you're you're now running these um, dark fluid cables out hundreds of meters in every direction, and it would just be a while to implement it, but it could be done. And I should we say dark fluid. You can run these on um, the muon reactor, and like I said before, okay. it'd only take about ten percent of your power. You take the muon reactor. Okay. And yeah, we take the muon reactor. Okay. And Otherwise, J Jason Eicholt can have um, two of the dark fluid um, capacitors buried um, at a kind of center relay point to act as a backup battery. Yep. Um, and then he can, they can start to work on the logistics of a system like that. I also start to start doing security drills, fire and attack. Okay. So we can start having control fire for problems. Fire is definitely easy. Um, what did you want to be the basic... Um, protocol for the researchers when there was an attack? For now, they just go into a safe rooms okay. <laughs> or safe areas and they congregate and <laughs> in the future they're going to get basic weapons training. Okay. Um, so they operate their suicide pistols. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, given the things that you've seen, it'd be difficult to in, what is it, enact a wide-reaching uh, attack Emergency plan yep. <laughs> could be creatures from the sky that are invisible, or demons from another dimension, yep. or yep. so on and so forth. But yeah, they they can get to safe areas where it'd be easier to extract them and protect those rooms. Yes. Um, Jason and I help. will also start working on um, some of that weapons development. You'd showed him the weapon that uh, Mi Five had created, and he thinks he can, with the ammunition that you have, make um, launchers for that. But of course, he doesn't really know how the the crystal premium is constructed, but he could make something very similar. All right. He says for the most part, the they use an electrical charge to um, completely plasma burn the powder, and he doesn't think it'd be that difficult given the equipment here to do something similar. It's just you would need a small battery in each, um, what the hell is it, each stock. Okay. Do I feel like my taking over an administrative position and telling people what to do would be more would help things get done faster than if I was actually what is your researcher. leadership it's going to lead right into my next question <clears throat> currently it is not any but I will buy it Jason Eichold is a lot better at administrating and leading the group than you are other than you have specific ideas about what you want you're by far a better researcher and developer. Um, if anything, Jason Eichold has gotten better over the last few years, given that he is, in actuality, the acting director, yep. while you're 
technically just where the money comes from. Uh, he's been working on a lot of projects, but he's been leading the teams. All right. So right now, he's a, a much better leader than you are right okay. at the moment, but you can give them ideas about what to do. All right. That's um, what I do then. I stay in my spot and I ask him if he regrets giving up his research role or if he's happy to be... No, he often helps. I mean, he's not always leading, and sometimes these projects take week by week. So he's often researching here. He doesn't go out and, he says, like, have grand adventures where random yep. stuff happens. But he feels fairly, he's fairly good with his ho-hum life here from what he has heard and seen in the field. Uh, he was, uh, what is it, the next project that he had kind of on the line, which he hasn't been directly developing it, but he's been helping. So he does... Uh, probably about 40 or 30% of his work is probably leadership. The rest of it is actually working on project. And he gets kind of, um, I suppose he enjoys it because he gets to come in at the good parts of certain development uh, rather than having to work from the ground up. He gets to come in at the end and kind of give ideas. and Do the highfalutin stuff. Yep, do the highfalutin stuff. So he's happy with his job here. Um, okay. it's, he says it's by far the best experience that he's ever had working with Walter and yourself. All right. Um, he says that, one of the projects that they have on the line is using some of um, the Yith devices that have been brought in. They found a way of storing what he'll say is picture imagery on a crystal medium. And he believes that he can start to feel devices that uh, take multiple snapshots of pictures. And he says probably about, um, initially probably about 15, 16 um, pictures per second. And they'll start collecting that data and actually see how the equipment is used in the field. So they can have their own division specifically dealing with developing field technology, which ultimately not only would help you, but he believes that would they could end up selling it off to, um, or at least um, lotting it off to Bauer. Okay. And of course you would be the, he says, the guinea pigs. You'd be wearing what he says probably a headset that would record these, and then you would end up retrieving them at the end of um, so many weeks and then or going through the imagery. Or when we fall. Yeah. <laughs> He, right. wouldn't, he wouldn't say anything like grim like that. He would imagine you guys are fairly survivable and you've done wonderful things. It's just right. at the end of the day, if they realize that a gun that they had developed or a technology that they are had handed off is being used in a different way than they thought, then they can make adaptations. They can see what's happening to the group and maybe have more intel about what they should be developing so far. They've been kind of spitballing these projects, um, as you've seen recently, but they don't have too much... You guys haven't detailed too much about, like, we need more of these, or this was particularly right. effective. Stop making these. They don't work. Yada, yada, yada. So he does, right. I suppose, lean into you a little bit regarding that. If they knew more about what you needed, they could try to make something more pertinent. Um, but I'll share a day with them and let them know that I've got so many projects I leave up in the air that I never get to. They understand. It's just they've been throwing out devices too, and they don't know. You haven't made too much noise about. Is it working? Do you not like it? Does no one use it? Is there a critical bug? I, I apologize to him and I ask him. For instance, what have you given me? Uh, they'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> Along with uh, Walter Riker, they've helped work on devices like portable shields with the original portable gift shield? technology. Like that, I like that a lot. It saved my life. Can we make more? They say yes. That, that's, <laughs> That's the type of information they wanted to know, whether or not it was useful, if there was something, because they're, they're not... It was awesome. They're not field technicians. You're they're cool. Not, <laughs> they're not soldiers. They don't know if it's practical or not. It's, it's Sometimes awesome they have lofty though. goals in mind, and it might be totally missing the mark. Uh, of these, one they tell you that for they've made those heavy cross-bridge particle spirit traps. They said that you've come across... Used one, but we've come across things. I just haven't had the opportunity yet. Okay. Um, they have. It's gonna be awesome awesome be like, let's see. I can use something that I know is effective, or this. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Didn't pan out. <laughs> um, Why don't you just ask for Ruse to help test the spirit trap? I mean, really. They've obviously seen you guys been using the um, communication systems that they had set up prior. Um, what are the other devices that Backpack. they? Backpack. Oh, the the field beacon. That's also one that they've known that you guys have recently yep. used. Um, Ba, 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 ba. I might be missing one or two, but those, uh, those type of devices in general. Can they make huge, handy haversacks where the item one is on top and it's extra dimensional space? They're going to look into that, but they say that sounds pretty tricky. All right. Let's not go with tricky. These shields are awesome. Let's start cranking them all. Yeah, they, uh, they'll kind of give you the specs. <laughs> okay. They're not. Idea for you. 
So I don't need ideas. No, no, no. <laughs> Go ahead. This, this is with the shield. You need more things to digest. More things on your plate, B. <laughs> what is that? What you need is more responsible. What is the, I'm just going to take a guess here. I what does the emitter shield, nozzle for the shield look like? <laughs> have label <laughs> signals on it. What? What is the emitter nozzle for the shield? Like, is, is the shield so, huge on no, the, it's its not. own right? It's, I believe I said it was five pounds. It sits at the crest of your elbow, it. and there's a large oh, emitter probably about here. And ultimately, when you reach your arm in a certain direction, and uh, how large is the emitter? I don't know what they mean. I don't have the emitter is <laughs> about yay big, and it's kind of a mushroom like, top shape. Oh, it's so like here, like if you can see okay. off my arm, like this big. So it does. It could get, get caught on something. So it's not tiny. It's not tiny. It's five pounds, and it's a kind of an arm brace from here to here. But for what it does, given its size, but um, how many of a field does it make? Like two could they make? It creates five? about the size of a medium-sized shield. So you're looking at about three feet in diamet.er My original idea so is moot, but a pretty it was decent-sized like, shield. Mail, yeah. I mean, the emitter was smaller. If you duck your head, like your yeah, upper you torso, mail, you know? and if you crouch, you should cover all yourself. Yep. Other than they, they haven't figured well, out maybe not your feet or yep. something. They haven't figured out a way of creating it in a specific shape. It's only in a round dome around the emitter. Right. right. Um, but still, so if you kind of narrowed your feet, if together, you narrow down, you crouched into a ball. It should cover most of your person. Right. Maybe like raise. It's just a like perfectly round yeah. disc in front of the emitter. Gotcha. That's about three feet. In. Since, since you know I'm hanging around her lab when they're talking to her about that, I'll be like, be "Cool, if the emitter were smaller, and you can make like energy plate mail with the smaller emitters. You know, like." There's a plate there. There's a plate there. They tell you that they also been working on a um, power armor suit. They ignored you. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is more relevant to what he's saying. They've also uh, developed a power armor suit. You've seen kind of it working around right now, uh, based on um, Captain Thomas Winfield's um, uh, research. Armor? Well, They're is it, using a is that armor though, or is that more of a like mech suit? Was my understanding was it wasn't so much armor, but it was more functional than defensive. Am I well, right? It, it's early in prototype. They tell you that it, it's capable of supporting itself, and it itself is a fairly strong metal composite frame with plating, so you are protected inside. Um, the main thing right now is a uh, Winfield is working for more of a. Um, a high-end elite suit system, um, so it's not very mass-producible at the moment. Um, it's mostly because he uses a power system that uses a tethered relay back to this, what is it, a capacitor that's buried out in the lot. Wait, wait, I got this. So it uses power from a um, dark fluid capacitor, but the suit doesn't have to worry about the, the generation of power. New best question. So they don't know how to control it. They just know emitter. It comes out this far. No, they know how to. They know how to create the field. But they can't make shapes, right? The emitter has to be a very specific shape, and they haven't been able to do complex shapes. So I'm, I'm th imagining just a small emitter on the end of like a little rod, say hilt shaped, and you know, it just shoots a beam straight up because you know it. It obviously ends at some point because the shield. Could they make that? But could they make one in blue and one in they can start could to could they name it a lightsaber? <laughs> <laughs> nope. <laughs> we can call it so, a horse art. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so they'll ask you, you're not talking about a dome, you want some sort of uh, a, force, a, sword, a force rod. They'll tell you a force rod. Sure, yeah. They, they believe so. I'd say that'd be a pretty cool addition for you know the whole gladiatorial thing you got going on. Well, the shield was, we thought it could be used against gunfire um, and things of that nature, but they don't have any, like, I suppose, real practical experience with spirits or things of that nature. Um, it's, it's basically an energy shield, right? From what they tell you, it's a um, could it's it be used ionized air. It doesn't work so well in a vacuum. Can it cut through things? Uh, they say, yeah, if the field is blocked by something, it could theoretically cut through it. Uh, that's why there's a specific brace where your arm has to be in a specific position. So you're not like, oh shit. <laughs> so you're not like, hey, what's going on? What's the time? Zorge. I'm dead. And you would saw the Yith device literally cut into the floor the last time you activated it. So, yeah, presumably that force could cut right through an object. B. I'm well, all for friend, the my friend does bring up a good point. If you can turn this into you know, something three, four feet long with some sort of safety device, you can't drop your own head off. That you can only activate using magical telekinesis. No. You can have one go out the other end. 
No. <laughs> That's too cumbersome, man. It's super sweet, guys. I may have cut off my leg. Somebody help me. <laughs> to do this sweet backspin. <laughs> Wasn't Ben working on regrowth of limbs or so? Yeah, yeah. That... No, they can work on that. Um, they'll ask specifically how you wanted to use it. As a weapon. Okay, so like I would they'll say like hack a, a people with it, and it'd be like a force thing. They probably wouldn't be ready for that. A sword. They can try to work on something like that. Um, they would say it'd probably be two handed to start off with because the emitter they're having it's trouble heavy. getting it beyond about six pounds, five pounds. Yeah. Um, so that's not too bad. Well, relative from their perspective, okay. I understand. But <laughs> all, all these five pound things <coughs> add up. Yep. Oh, I got twenty pounds. <laughs> that's where we're getting power armor. <laughs> there you go. Whatever. In fairness, if you're you're what is it, a hundred and twenty pound researcher here and you're carrying forty pounds worth of equipment, you're like, This is heavy. I, I have to run from room to room. Yep, I understand. <laughs> and you might have some marine on the far end like five pounds. Yeah, if we can give me that. <laughs> <laughs> I've got more weight than the a little light. <laughs> so no, they'll look into that. Um they'll try to build, my friends. They'll try to build some more shield you units. Laugh at my ideas. I just got us <laughs> lightsabers. You got nothing yet. I might have a lightsaber. <laughs> it does seem a lot that well, he's kind of pitching ideas off of them. They do kind of look at you as though you're the one kind of yeah, giving the I'm like the thumbs up noise with reduction. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So they start looking into that. Um, they'll tell you within the next week or so they'll have some of those field units, uh, probably at least three to start with, and you can dole them out. They'll start re- capturing imagery. And they'll tell you there's an on and off button. They don't have any other setting right now. Yep, I understand. Otherwise, they'll probably pick up the next... Uh, Three or four days for your character, okay. um, doing the various projects. During lunch that day, can I go test the gravity hammer out? Not during lunch that day, because you take two hours for lunch. Well, good, good chunk I mean, of time after lunch. After lunch, is that a gravity. five point or ten point? Just said it's a ten point. Okay. So I am fully within my right to hose him on. And that. I think you should. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> after di- was it uh, coming Stick onto your uh, fourth day? You can end up testing the gravity hammer. I, I just wanted to go hit a tree with it. You know, not a Unfortunately, tree. a beast facility, you're like, oh, wow, that's pretty fucking no. desolate. <laughs> Tumbleweed. Hey, hey, I have property nearby. I just go out to the So property. there's some saplings that have been not quite yet planted. There's just a few <laughs> chalk lines. So I find something I can hit, and then I hit it. Okay, like a rock or something? What's your effective strength? 14. Lif- lifting strength? I have no idea. Okay. I was just wondering if you had any levels of lifting strength. Um, you can give me a two-handed axe mace. Default? A dex roll. No default knife or anything? Not really. This is a large fucking hammer. There's like have, knife. Uh, I might have picked up like staff or something. Give me a sec. Staff training would be part of the order. Um, I might be, have opted out of that though. Yeah, you, can, <laughs> you could have done that. They recommended staff training. Dex. So I have a seven. Dex is sixteen. So that by nine. That by nine. Minus default. Right away. It's a large hammer, so your skill using this in combat is definitely you're going to want to learn two-handed axe mace. Um, But you could use that for anything from um, hammers to jacks um, to random large table legs you come across to hit people with. So it's it's, it's a good skill. Um, Your strength is 14. Uh, What you do find by the end of the day is you'll end up taking... Well, I wasn't planning on taking the whole day. It's just like... Boom! Yep, works. Um, Then just for that particular time, um, you do feel a strain in your arms. Ultimately, when the gravity hammer comes close to the objects and they kind of come close to each other, um, you have a solid metal uh, handle along the shaft, and it retches your arms down as it hits, and you're not quite strong enough to use the gravity hammer, so you feel tearing in your shoulders a little bit, because this weapon is hitting so hard, you're like, yeah, hit that rock, boosh, and you're like, yeah, I felt that all through my body. <laughs> so not only is there, the it speeds up as it comes close to the object, which um, makes it harder to handle, but then the recoil through the shaft, a solid metal shaft, it it hurts. Um, so it'd it be might something that a rock golem wielding it could do some serious damage. Yeah, it, over time though, you, there'll be some wearing on the hands. 
You imagine if it's you didn't... It's a rock golem. It doesn't care. Yeah. Uh, you yourself, it definitely does a lot of damage from what you can tell. Um, it might knock through a wall fairly easily, like a cobblestone wall or a brick wall. But, yeah, this it's just killing... It's like a um, you put a pneumatic hammer on the bottom of your... Another hammer, so you're like, yep, that hurt! It hurt a lot, my hands are sore, they're kind of stinging right now. You might be able to offset some of that with maybe uh, a slightly more flexible handle, but then that would kill... What is it? That would change the durability of the weapon. No, nope, it's it, good. Functionally, it works. You imagine, I'll probably say you do it once or twice and it continues to work just fine. It's just, yeah, there's a that snap at the end that kind of pulls on your arms and your back and you're like, yeah, that's, that's what I would imagine, you know, a Master Chief gravity weapon might feel like. <laughs> and uh, I'll walk back to the lab and be like, gravity hammer works. Yeah. As I walk You notice you can't <laughs> pick anything up over his wrist. <laughs> 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 he, might be going, he might be going through that cup of coffee like yeah. <laughs> Do you wreck your arms? <laughs> yes he did. <laughs> Do you have high pain threshold? <laughs> no. It so would be noticeable <laughs> that <laughs> during the course of the day, I mean, he can lift them, but you'll see him kind of do that thing like with the coffee in a little bit, and he'll occasionally kind of rub a shoulder, and he's like, grab the hammer. Super awesome. <laughs> we'll be over here, guys. <laughs> he wipes a tear. <laughs> Totally would kill a demon. <laughs> you, if it hits somebody in the chest, you imagine it might collapse their chest cavity. Wow. In the very least, the demon would be not there. Logistically looking at it, he has a very solid uh, kind of steel head and a steel handle. You imagine that the reverberation from a weapon like that might be pretty thick in the hands. Maybe a wooden handle? It would last hold up. <laughs> You'd probably break. Keep in mind, uh, I'll be the. I'm holding be, a rock all the moment. Then, if really it broke nice. off at the head, you'd have to be exceptionally careful about grabbing the head of the gravity <laughs> hammer. You're like, <laughs> <laughs> get a stick, push it. <laughs> so, was it a mistake to hang on to it when you used it? Or? I feel like it'd be a mistake to let go of it. <laughs> <laughs> so there are no good choices. No one should use it. What, what I feel like it would have been a problem if. You know, I'd been used to like chopping chop wood, and if I were GI yeah, Joe, and I was just like, mm. uh, I would say that I'm kind of like okay. you don't have a lot of skill like throwing war hammers around, and this is kind of a war hammer, so y- there might be a huge difference if you actually learn two handed axe mace. Do you want to try Hunter? Or you're not here? I'm not here. He's not here. Um, You've just been inputting. Also, you feel as though if you were a bit stronger, if you were if you were Lou Frigno, you think that you would be kicking ass with this thing. Or the only problem is it speeds up as it hits, so it's pulling your body kind of down and twisting slightly, and it's just so if I like it, jumped it off the you ground a little bit, it's like if you had fine. no practice with a jackhammer and then you just started up for an hour. And you're like, yeah, I'm feeling that. I'm gonna be feeling that for the next few days. Uh, but it totally kicked that ground's ass. It did. No, you can't open your hands. <laughs> 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 All right. So that's, uh, what is it? You have uh, pretty much the next week for you um, with those various projects. Learning um, from Bruce. So. Walter Riker says, um, what is it? We'll tell you. He did uh, take a look over um, your Christmas break. And there's a large party, and a lot of people have fun. And you can generally see that even though you're kind of tightening up the security a little bit, nobody seems to have a, a huge um, concern. Everyone seems to be very. Uh, happy working here. Um, no, the hammer they, falls. <laughs> most of the people here, Literally. it's like working at Google for them. They're like, well, this is cutting edge <coughs> technology. We don't have a whole lot of restraints. The work cycle is really regular. It's, uh, not regular, I should say relaxed. There's no critical projects like that. Like we need to figure out how to do this or defu- defuse the bomb. It's mostly like, what should we build today? <laughs> I don't know. Let's draw some shit on the chalkboard and we'll figure this out. We'll have some cake. I'll order from that Chinese food that we used to <laughs> order from in town. What are you talking about, cannibal man? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there was one researcher that was vomiting after finding out information regarding that. That's, um, awesome. That's how tight your security is. You yeah. your people are being fed to other people. <laughs> well, in fairness, I mean, he would have to drive an hour into the cities, and then it, it, it was apparently running for multiple years. And it had only been because uh, B had uh, pulled in the registry number where they started to do investigations about where, how Chocho's got a hand yeah. of these particular prototype weaponry, and then... I'm not faulting the guy. I mean, it was very convenient. I mean, you know. yeah. it was delicious. They delivered. It was delicious. <laughs> Succulent. And it was also tender. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
But otherwise, you and uh, Walter Riker um, have um, your time as well. And he'll uh, suggest certain improvements um, to your device, but he says that you did a fairly good job. He thinks they can shave about uh, 0.3 pounds off of the biometric device with some major, it was some minor modifications. But beyond that, I mean, he had to take a, a full rebuild of the device to try to save any more weight. All right. 1.2. Um, and he would say game. the main thing that's limiting right now is your power source is heavy. <coughs> and there's not too much. You just developed power sources that can even do this type of stuff. So, All right. Um, otherwise. So what were the names of the spells Bruce was teaching? Oh, so the first one was Dimensional Sight. It's a type of a, a rune that goes over one of your eyes. Um, he... Possesses certain tattoos that you can either tattoo it on permanently, and then you can activate it. Um, you can enchant it there, meaning it always turns on when you close your eyes, or you can just paint it on, and then, provided that's on, you can concentrate and activate and it. You can just make a lens or anything. With the crawling tattoo, no, uh, at least not initially. You might be able to develop it, but usually his requires skin contact because it interacts with nerve tissue directly. But the good thing about invoking that sigil is it's usually just you thinking about it, provided it's there. A lot of the other ones require you to gesture a little bit or say something, incantation in Latin, and then the sigil's there, and you're like, ba -ba -ba -da, lightning bolts. Um, however, this is merely you have the rune physically on your skin, you think about it, and then your thoughts activate the rune. So it's been more than three days now. We're so starting to go over the next three days, so I was talking about... Well, I thought the fourth day was at lunch I played around with the guy. Yeah, we'll go into your next three days. I was, I was going down the line. As soon as I have some time where we're not around people, I'll address the space. Zykes? I don't need you to appear. I just assume you're there. So maybe you can, I don't know, burn a hole in that tree to let me know I'm not just talking to space. There's a branch that kind of um, seems to be slightly smoking after a moment. and then Good enough, Zykes. I see it. <clears throat> if you'd be so kind as to go tell your mistress that the Camelot weapons, if she could perhaps give them to her husband and... As he transports them, I understand he's going over to America. I'll mm -hmm. make my friends aware that. <coughs> oh, that's also something that happens. Okay. That um, that those objects will be arriving. Okay. Then I'll get on the radio to B. Yes. B. Um, Angus and his son Ingley are going to be coming over to help with our upcoming operation. Okay. They're going to be bringing some weapons. I'm in London right now. Let me know. He'd also said that he, he wanted me to take a look at a piece of um, technology yep. that they had I come across. Yep, I'll tell you about that. Okay. And then tell me when uh, your husband feels that people can walk through the London gate. All right, I'll let you know. All right. I don't think it's going to be anytime soon, I'll be honest with you. All right. Well, I'm just if you can get to the continent. I'm hanging out in London right now. It's awesome. Right. I'm sleeping in an You're aware that I the portable gate system that you have been using in the past is separate from that <coughs> transatlantic gate. So you could open up a small gate there. Oh. If you I remember mean, the one that you took to Australia, the one to that you took to, to the... Try to see if I can get on an MI5 airship over to France. I can open up a gate to the... Con or to the yeah, there's uh, a lot of deep ones watching things like that. Have, don't we, haven't we confirmed we can do it or no? Um, you, I'm not saying you can't sure. do it. I'm not, I'm the transatlantic gate has had absolutely no hang-ups. Okay. It doesn't seem to be affected by whatever yeah. mystical shield is protecting Great Isles. Mm -hmm. And in certain cases, you've seen people bypass or punch through that mystical shield. It's just your standard travel. There's risks involved now. Okay. So theoretically, he could open it up. You don't know. I don't think we should do that. I think it should be to the continent. If you can get to the continent. I'll see if I can hop an airship. Okay. You are aware, um, <coughs> what is it, Angus Urquhart gave you the information he was going to be going to via airship. Apparently, they've developed a type of airship that flies above weather in direct, re was it in direct response to weather taking down their airships, sh um, strange lightning, thunderstorms, other things of that nature. Um, so apparently they're able to fly above it and then it's no longer affected. Then they're going to France from there and then there's a chantry in France, okay. which he plans on taking to Massachusetts and heading over. All right. I'll see if I can get a hold of MI5 to see if I can get on the... You can there. It seems as though MI5 is integrated completely with the um, army now. There's no real difference. They're no yeah. longer a division. If anything, they're now more in charge of operations just because this is their supposedly their wheelhouse. Okay, so I'll try to get my uh, transport, transportation all lined up. And then 
<coughs> basically I'll spend the rest of my time with Artemis and he's the master I'm the pupil so tell him I'd like to learn things if just, he knows any way to get rid of paradox that I'm all for that otherwise we're going to be going fighting demons in a little bit so if he's got any good ideas on that mm -hmm. otherwise I'm your clay to mold he will tell you that um, he would mm -hmm. let me see here <coughs> need to open up my other one here I didn't see one for Artemis, so you're going to load that? I think it was part of the City of the Cats. Oh, okay. This, uh, in there. He will tell you um, that he, you might want to learn um, Shake It Off, Flick Wounds, um, ba -ba -ba, Primal Snare, Primal Buster. Oh, lick Wounds, Shake It Off. Uh, and Surf Dance. He would actually recommend Surf Dance. Primal Snare, Primal Buster, Surf Dance. Surf Dance would probably be the one he recommends first. And Surf Dance? Yes. What's that do? Um, through acrobatics and dance, um, ultimately, it, um, how he describes it, it is, it is a t similar to fold space, but you're not actually changing the space around you. You're literally contorting your body through space. Uh, allowing you to dodge seemingly things that you shouldn't be able to dodge because technically your upper torso wasn't there. Gotcha. So if you get back and tell you, so it, tell us it deals that, with combat rolls and get right, we'll see barrel rolls, cartwheels, and other sort of strange things like that, where it looks like you're there, but sometimes you're not quite there. And you're like, oh, I just missed his cheek. Uh, Enter the matrix. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit so. So I do think those things, if he, <clears throat> if I can train in my dreams and not be subject to bad yep. things, I'll do that. Um, he can um, teach you in two days surf dance through the means of your dreams. Okay. Um, since there's a strange time um, in your own passing dreams, things seem to happen very quickly. Okay. This might be how Jeb learns things fairly quickly. All right. Am I able to fill out um, body language, put a point in body language so that I can? Yep. Over the course of the week you can. And they'll be the primary means that which he'll communicate to you um, while in uh, public, public. But there also are a fair amount of um, basic spells that, depending on um, priority <gasps> here, he'll tell you things like, um, what the what, hell is and it? And what was Surf Dance? Is it average hard? It's average. Uh, binding slash uh, Blessings of Bast is another good one to learn. Um, then what have you, um, what the hell is it? Um, It's not communion, but it is. Uh, was it messenger of Bast? Um, also, shake it off. Is that a healing one or something? Um, how he describes it is, um, you're in control of your own body, so you tell your body what it should be capable of doing, and you should be able to through motions and mental perseverance just shake off some of the wounds mechanically it turns a lot of your lethal damage to blunt trauma your character is still injured but blunt trauma heals at a rate of um i want to say one per hour or so so your bullet shot was actually really just a flesh wound and you should be able to shake it off in a day or two hippie magic no, it's just you know your body best, so you damn well know All this either. dance. You know you're stuff. not that injured. Exactly. I'm never that injured. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Looked much worse than it was. Right. I hope you convey this to our characters. Um, I'm never that injured. Blessings of Bast yeah, you've seen like you before. Use Jeb used that before. Damage. It's a. Um, he's never accumulated paradox with it, but it does heal slower than some of the other spells. You generally heal about one per minute with that, depending on your capabilities. And it's a ritual invoking Bast's power directly. Um, then Messenger of Bast allows you to communicate through the cat network, if you will, to other um, messengers, um, pretty much any cat, or even um, members of the Bastite order. And then there's a whole extensive list of good spells. But those are the ones you prioritize. If, if you're going to get messed up, however, you don't need to shake it off if you didn't get hit in the first place. Yep. All right. 
<laughs> you can't be hit hit. Can I practice my acrobatics during the daylight hours? I, yep. You know. um, Does acrobatics he want me to learn dance too? Um, he says that I suppose it is a little bit weird because even though he is more um, what is it? I suppose has more professional demeanor. It is a little bit like uh, you're learning a lot of ancient secrets from the Big Lebowski. You're like, should I learn dance? He's like, yeah, it might help. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so can you teach me? Step one, two, three. Yeah. I'm, out, I'm, up. I'm out in the alley with a cat doing a little dance. Yep. Yep. Any points in flexibility add to dance and oh, things that nature? Take flexibility. I start stretching Five points. points. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so now we have cats with all bones. have humans with all bones. I'm going to be one of them. <laughs> you get bonuses to a lot of things for flexibility. Escape and yep, yeah. a bunch of stuff. Yeah. All right. Um, it's going to be difficult. You can put a point in, I would say, over time uh, for the acrobatics um, and then the spells over time. Well, I, I, I already have acrobatics, so I'm just be looking to bump up one more. Yep, that's fine. Are you sure it's dimensional sight? Before it looks like I have written down spirit sight. Spirit sight is a type of permanent rune that he can make, and he offered that to other people. It actually, the spell it derives from is a... Um, uh, is called dimensional sight. It's just your gravity hammer is not called gravity ripple hammer. Does that make sense? There was a spell to make your gravity hammer, and okay. spirit sight is a actual physical rune, which you don't need to know the spell. It's just always on. Uh, Captain Thomas actually has that and sleeps with lead coveralls to his eyes yeah, when he no, sleeps. That's not happening. <laughs> uh, he's always got the mystical ability to close his eyes and see life force. So. Yeah, I have light sleeper. That's <laughs> yeah. That, wanna, that would suck as light sleeper. You got light sleeper too. Oh my god! You eat slow. You can't sleep that way. <laughs> You're all kinds of awesome. Are you insomniac? <laughs> no. Okay. I didn't know that existed. Oh, you could take it. That would have been taken instead of the eating one. All right. Um, so you can work on those during your uh, next week here. Um, and you could go with Angus. Uh, there is a, a, a slight retroactive thing, which all of you could be involved in, but this has happened during the first week. Okay. Uh, however, your next uh, several days, you took about half your um, fourth day messing around with the gravity hammer. Your arms are a little bit sore. Um, I would say it's blunt trauma, so you've taken two points of blunt trauma from dicking around with it. But by the end of the day, you'll be fine. It's just okay. soreness. So what was the spell I was learning from Veruza on the fourth day then? Um, so probably for the next week, it was at the the next yep. um, end of this week and a couple days into the next week, uh, you'd be learning um, Compel Spirit. And that's, and that's more. Yep, that's average. And that's more of a classical chantry spell. Supposedly you can use the sigil allow with an um, incantation, an invocation of that symbol to control um, spirits in the area. Theoretically that could have been used on the creature that took possession of you at one point in time. Can you use sigil yeah, invocation or what? Just, just sigil invocation. Maybe just see if I was on I think you did it too. Yeah. So you need the physical somewhere. Sorry, it doesn't have to be on your person. It can be on a, uh, a book or it can be on a jacket, what have you. That's just once or twice as long. Or on the cross. <laughs> or on the cross, yeah. I can't, I can't help you. Can't off. So that'll be the remaining of the week. So then all this, you'd all be here when. Um, um, Angus Urquhart arrives. Okay, I'm done. You guys making arrows? Uh, <laughs> he keeps saying about the damn arrow. He took the least amount it's of time on everyone. Exactly. Uh, He's like the totally inoffensive. It was like 30 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, and that that's the, that was what was in my head at the time. That's uh, he making arrows. So, like I said before. Um, you do somewhat recognize the individual just immediately. It does seem a bit odd, and all of you would see, um, what is it, Mr. Urquhart? At, at first, you're like, well, that's Angley, and who the hell is this? Like a cousin? And you're like, wait a minute, that's like the same derby hat I've seen before, the same it's other. Him. He's just younger. Yeah. You're not sure why specifically. I asked him if he met with uh, one of my workers named Jack. Uh, Jack's been working on the youth series. He said, he finally succeeded? <laughs> <laughs> no, he said that he uh, has been active in the um, MI5 war against the uh, Blue Hades threat. Um, he says it's a long story, but he is currently, um, what he would say is, bound to a primal life force entity, and it has slowly been regenerating his tissues back past what they should be. 
He says he's not terribly comfortable about it, but he survived a lot of things that he should have um, so far. I mean, he's already had an arm ripped off by a Blue Hades okay. in the last couple of weeks here, and uh, yeah, he's mm, if he if he can take a danger to himself and help people around him, especially g- given the great need in MI5 right now. All right. Um, but he is alternate. Um, what is it? He wanted to talk to you specifically because they've been finding these small devices across London and a few other um, heavily populated regions. He'll put out the device. It's probably about eight pounds. It's kind of a tripod device with a kind of snaking cylindrical spire. It does look similar to things you've seen in the past. But you can give me a perception hypertech because you don't have the skill this actually is. I'm pretty confident. Skill? Seriously? Hypertech communications. 19. In fairness, it's it's so difficult. It's like spells. It's like I don't, I mean, you're not going to learn all the spells. You're not going to learn all the tech skills. I did it by thirteen. By thirteen, you've seen very similar devices. This obviously is some sort of serpent tech. Um, you don't. It, from what he describes, is it's kind of in remote locations, somewhat hidden. But obviously, they're in locations where they wouldn't have been installed a long time ago. They're sitting in old, uh, what is it, abandoned, evacuated um, hotel buildings and other things like that. The technology you've seen, you're, it's some sort of collection device, and you've seen something very similar when you released Michael Larson from that fear chamber, and you will find at the bottom that it's collecting some sort of strange yellow gas. Okay. I let him know everything I know. It's collecting a strange yellow gas, serpent tech. It wants your fear. I mentioned the fear chamber. It wants fear, <coughs> most likely. Mm-hmm. I don't you know can give me a deduction... Which really? is the of, same of as, course, um, the serpents are taking advantage of the situation. Well, from what B, oh, depending on our rules, nine. From what you understand, and this has come up, a few people have asked you this before regarding how the serpents had planned if they required um, energy to reactivate their sleepers. If they had enough, then why didn't they wake up everyone right away? And it seems as though the locations that these are planted at, at least the ones that they've found, are around a lot of hot spots in the war and large city populations. It seems as though they might have a passive way to somehow collect psychoactive material, Kay. if not fear itself. Kay. So uh, it's a technological skill that you're not really inclined to know much about. But it seems as though they might be some serpent faction, or if not all, several serpent factions, might be collecting fear from across certain areas on the planet, or at least in London. Great. This could be used to reactivate sleepers so that have been asleep for hundreds of thousands of years. Um, does it look like it needs to be manually collected? Given from what you can look at, it does look like somebody must have to pick this up at some point in time. You don't see any massive power source. I mean, you haven't really deconstructed this, but this looks like it's somebody collects this at some point in time. I tell them it's a new player and they're gathering fear in London or England. What he says is he's never come across any serpent-looking thing, but he says at a distance, how can you tell the difference between a hybrid and a, a snake man? Right, you can't. Um... So he, they haven't come across anything that's even using high tech against them, but they'll definitely be aware of the situation. They're not quite sure what to do about it because, like you said before, they've only recently come across these things. He would probably say up, that they might have been active for the last several weeks in certain locations, but at least they've only really noticed it just recently. Maybe they've been doing this a while. I'd like a couple more of these so I can start deconstructing them, seeing if they're sending all these kind of beacon. And he has two in a backpack with him, and he says you can yeah. keep these. They have more in uh, London. Okay. Um, he will I'd tell start you. Gathering them up, I'll let you know if it's possible to destroy them. He will tell you that there is some sort of. Um, an, in their first encounter, from what he's aware of, of MI5, they inadvertently damaged one of the reception containers. Um, the researcher panicked. Um, they were able to calm him down. He almost bit his own tongue out, but otherwise, it seemed to be non toxic. He released over, the fear, most likely. They weren't sure what it was at the time. They thought it was some sort of drug or. Not necessarily that. It could have been any kind of chemical concoction. He could have come across just a um, some sort of heating element and the chemical reacted poorly in his system. Yeah. They didn't know. Okay. I'll take it back to the base and I'll start deconstructing it and see what I can figure out. All right. The only other thing um, is you would end up seeing 
Um, probably later on in the evening, um, he touches base with some of the people here. He would talk to the professor, um, tell him about a few things that he wanted to teach him if he ever had off time, but he only had a small amount of time, which uh, technically he was on mission to get this back to um, you, and uh, he doesn't give you a number to contact in France. Okay. Um, there, the line, undersea line to England had been recently cut. Yeah. Um, I would imagine. So they've been passing messages through the chantry and um, shortwave radio um, waves. Okay. <clears throat> but the other thing that later on in the evening, um, he seems to be staring out kind of a window, and Angley is pretty cheerful. Um, it seems as though Angus is a little bit less. Um, what the hell is it? He's a little bit more outgoing than he would normally be. Maybe it's because of just um, um, the chemicals in his system. Now it's reverted to a, a younger state. Uh, but he seems a little bit outgoing, a little bit more confident. Um, Angley is always un was it uneeringly cheerful. But that might be due to his nature, where you know that his mother, whether it's her conditioning, even Dawn, just don't seem to register fear right. They're like, there's a monster over there. It might kill us. Right. We should get something done over here. And he's like, that's right. We need to get something done over here. And <laughs> everyone else is panicking. And even Angus Urquhart will end up rolling over. And he's like, oh, holy shit, holy shit. And Ang Angley will run up. And he's like, what do I got to do, Dad? <laughs> so the men are normal and the women are touched. No, Angley... Angley does the same He's thing. The boy. All right. Angley's the boy, and Angus Urquhart will sit and really like under gunfire, and the same thing with the Glocky. He's like, oh shit, there's zombies coming on the left. He's like, oh, I'll take care of that, Dad. I'll run over there. I had it back. But yeah. it's like, look at the sunset. Everyone <laughs> but Angus seems to not register fear correctly, so that's why right. I said it might be due to their biology. Um, you're not sure. All right. However, the one thing that you find odd is he does ask one of your other people about when he saw the drone moving around inside your facility. You know that uh, Dr. Mecklot has that drone that helps repair the facility and other things of that nature. It was one of the primary um, Builders. constituents of the original relay. Since yeah. then, it's been kind of just moving around. Um, and Dr. Mecklot hasn't really talked about it too much, but you've seen that... Angus specifically was asking Jason Eichholt about it. However, you weren't there for the conversation. You just kind of... All right, I need to get brought up to speed. So I go over there and say, about the drone, drone what did you notice about it? Because that thing's always bothered me. He says he, he, he doesn't know this one specifically, but this isn't the first time he's seen one of those. Where else have you seen them? Uh, he says about seven weeks ago on the coast, which used to be the city of Dover, he said that he saw one of these things. He was overwatching from a high position, and a pure blood uh, was directing uh, what he would say is a breeding camp in that region. And he was watching to see if there was a good time to, I suppose, do reconnaissance and if there was a way of taking out that pure blood out there. Um, it seemed to act unusual later on into the evening, and he thought that it had made his position, even though he was quite some distance off. But it turned around, it seemed to use some sort of magic in the air which seemed to bend um, air and one of these things appeared out of nowhere ripped in half and fell down to the ground he said a fraction of a second later after it hit the ground it just went up in some sort of magnesium flame there was nothing left but a cast but he swears that he saw something else on the ground move and he didn't see the drone initially but it looked like something else was he said it, it looked like it was see-through but the light didn't go through it perfectly he said it was probably about man-sized, and the re was it. He says that that thing got really close to the deep one, probably within five meters. He doesn't know why. Do you think that there's like a spirit or something like that, or an invisible human that's linked to that drone? He doesn't know specifically. He was curious as to what it was, but of course he couldn't track down there because he didn't want to go in. Yeah. Um, as he the says Greeks that he's examining the modern day predator. He's not drone. terribly good at it, um, but since he is somewhat bound to this primal entity, the drone is obviously not registering for him. But he thought that there was something else near there. He he doesn't know anything here. I mean, there's a bunch of people here. He can't tell. He's not really that good at it. But um, he thought that there was something else that wasn't at least a pure blood down there. But he didn't see it well. It, he says it was it was like it was invisible, but not really. I'll try the uh, full lens, matter, EM, bio, temporal, dimensional, causality, cycle, dark fluid, looking at that drone. Do you have that? Um, if I don't, I borrow it from Jeb. They took a look at it, and they were questioning where it They gave you back the original. 
Okay. Taking a look for it, um, Jeb had never used it here, but there is a strange, was it, there's a heavy spatial um, component all around this facility. Yep. Um, you imagine that's because the relay and supposedly there's a buffer zone, but occasionally you get kind of near the, the relay, there's faint after images of something not quite there, but none of the other modes really detect it. Does it seem like, when you say not quite there, does it seem like temporal or s dimensional? It's registering under spatial sensors. Okay, that's it's, temporal. It's spatial. like there's a cloud in that position, as though you're looking at like um, a car moving through a, a fog bank. Okay. But none of the other ones' sensors detect it. And who's the guy on the other side of the relay? Jason Eyholt? Or is that my guy on this side? That's your administrator, Dr. Mecklot. Mecklot, yeah. Uh, I have a picture of him, too, if you don't remember. Yeah, I'll take a look. Damn you, window search. You don't work properly. No, I hate how they changed it so it automatically looks in like a specific directory instead of your whole computer. The problem I have is it never seems to find the file. I, I think it's broken in Windows 7. I just didn't care to fix it. <laughs> I'm, I'm serious. I think it, it's it's broken. It's coded poorly. So, so does the drone look something like that, Ian? No. So it's not protecting a halo? Not from what you know of. <laughs> you said a floating drone. That's what I was imagining. Uh, it's. I would describe it as it's fairly sleek. It looks a little bit like a, um, a Fallout um, eye drone, except there's kind of strange um, spindles, almost like fiber optic cables that come out the back and act more like they're animate. And that seems as though it uses that. Uh, so it's some sort of like weird combination of a, a squid and a um, squid and a drone from Fallout. So it's a Matrix seeker thinger. A little, <laughs> uh, a little bit, but it doesn't have huge arms like that. It's just cables. It's take huge cables. Uh, where is this? As soon as you learn your Matrix abilities, you will realize this is your nemesis. There we go. <laughs> I had him under his first name. Nice. <laughs> and you've seen this man on this, this. Um, He's boring. He has kind eyes. Yep. You've seen him on. He always seems to have. I suppose what you've seen before. He always seems to have that dead eye. Or it's like those are kind eyes, but it doesn't really change. No. So. Um, You've seen him on that electro, um, uh, was it, um, electric typewriter type thing where it displays images, and you haven't seen anything that's looked like that before, um, but B has one at this facility. Supposedly it had been gotten up and running by uh, Dr. Mecklot. I'm going to go talk to him about the drones. All right. Um, you can I'll get in contact bring, uh, with him. I'll bring over Angus, too. You can stand up to the side if he has any questions. Okay, you'll stand up there. And I'll tell him that... Uh, I've got a couple questions for him that he can answer for me. I'd really appreciate it. One of your no, drones sure. was apparently spotted and destroyed over in the British Isles. What can you tell me about that encounter? Oh, uh, he'll tell you. He seems a little bit surprised um, that you bring it up. Uh, he does look a little bit over at um, Angus or Card. Doesn't look like you recognize him or anything else of that nature. But it seems as though he's tried already trying to make deductions about how you may have come across this information. Yeah. Um, He'll tell you that they've been doing uh, reconnaissance and exploratory um, searches in certain regions. Given that they haven't had much threats of um, Blue Hades, they thought it'd be wise for them to learn specifically how they operate, how it's changed over the last several hundred years since they've last been here. What was the uh, <clears throat> temporal spatial form that was left after it was destroyed? How does this thing work? He says the drone. He says the drone has basic cloaking capabilities. Um, he does look as though he doesn't like saying as much in front of Angus. Um, he's done that to the researchers too before, 
Okay. You're one of the few people that actually seems... I did seems say early on that I was going to have him stand off camera, but that's okay. He made a mistake, or I didn't do it off to the side. Excuse me, then. Okay. I wanted him off to the side so yep. he could ask questions if Okay, he really but he's to. not supposed to be there. Right. All right, before doing this, you could have him walk off okay. to the side. Um, then he wouldn't have looked at... He would have kind yep. of looked around where you are right now, but it seems as though he kind of takes a moment, kind of looks down, and it seems as though he's trying to do something. Be the omnipotent. Um, but... What have you. Um, he says that the drone has basic cloaking capabilities, and what he'll tell you is um, he wasn't sure what the capabilities of detection was with the Blue Hades threat. At least, uh, what is it? They've taken to writing down the um, MI5 code names for these creatures. Yeah. So, after your drone was destroyed, there was some sort of bipedal entity that was revealed. What? Give me a fast talk. Yeah, Angus Urquhart didn't really say. He said there was something that yeah. he thought was over there. I guess I deduced. Seven? Yep, you deduced. So I'm just saying the fast talk is... Seven. My seven? He says that he'll have to check his records. Um, there might have been another drone operating in the area. Did this drone originate from my facility? Was it deduced here and walked to the through the Atlantic or teleported itself over there? He says no. It wouldn't have been produced at your facility, but you have to imagine that the relay is the main means in which they transport goods and other things of that nature. The same way that you get the materials, they shipment through the relay. This is their rail line. Alright, so you have another facility on Earth someplace. Give me a fast talk. <laughs> I'm asking legitimate questions. You can. Nine. I did it by... So you got to convince him that you're not seven again. actually going to use this knowledge. My seven? He seems to kind of pan face for a moment. He said one can assume that. All right. Is there going to be direct connections back to my facility? Can the he say, he'll tell you that the relay um, itself could be tracked, but he says that no operations are based... No... He says, no current operations are based out of your facility. Yeah, but you're using energy from here to do stuff and relay stuff. All right, let's talk about something completely different. I pull out the fear generator and collector mm -hmm. and gather. What do you know about these things? Are the snake men active again? Um, he says that there's always a small population running here and there, but for the most part, um, they're more merely technicians keeping everything up and running. Um, obviously, their information is out of date, so they're currently... Um, um, doing exploratory missions to find out more information. It seems like that piece of technology, um, he would make <laughs> it and say that they've come across some of those before. He believes that they require a certain type of psychoactive material to reanimate sleepers. He said that there are other means, but they're far less efficient from his records. Is there any way to find these devices? Is there any way to disable them? Is there anything I can do with them to make them of use to me? Um, like, can this fear material be turned into energy? He said it is a type of psychoactive um, energy. They theoretically could be done. He says that he doesn't have um, any knowledge of... He doesn't have any knowledge of complete devices that would work in that op was it in that way. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. He says that there are means of detecting those type of devices with specialized sensors. Um, actually, one of those, uh, can I see this? This yep. has all the sensor modes on it. Yep. Um, psychoactive? Yep. They should, the gas itself should be detectable with a psychoactive sensor. So they could do sweeps in certain areas. You'd have to get close to the device because it is somewhat shielded. But once it starts to concentrate a certain amount, it's difficult to hide. Like to all right, so you're going to have to teach me about psychoactive yeah. sensors. I'm going to have to start making these for MI5. He could provide you with um, some specs, some specifications. All right, let's microsize it, make them as cheap as we can. He says that's all up to your production capabilities and your mind. Well, However, it's he up feels to giving me some good blue tax and he feels that you should be adequately able to replicate the technology given your current resources at your one facility. All right. Otherwise, you can have. Printed out on your electronic printing press. Yep. Fairly soon here. I'll ask him for any diagram. hints he has to help microsize my biosigns monitor. Down to one point two. One point two pounds. I'd really like to get it to, you know, like a pair of glasses, a couple ounces. He would say that 
you've made some fairly um, decent um, guesses about how the technology should be miniaturized. Um, he would say that right now, um, a better refinement um, of your battery technology, your circuitry, just really your interconnected technology, you're building devices and you don't have a strong infrastructure for it. So you don't have, right. what he'll say is things like better vacuum tube type circuits, um, better transistors, um, right. better smaller boards or smaller control um, devices that handle all of this. He says you have all the technology there, it's just each one of these smaller devices could be refined and then they would in part make all of the rest of your technology more refined. All right. And if I start some new research paths. Research paths, you're right. Well, you research mean. the smaller test tube. <laughs> I thank him for what he's told me. Ask if you have any questions. Chantry, for me. they do that. See, they have the 10 milliliter flask. Um, they can actually. He says that he doesn't under. have any active technology. Um, he there? says that they do it? occasionally send out expedition teams, but there's nothing, what is it, that you should need to worry about. Um, I should, but I could. I might want to. <laughs> there's not. You didn't say there's nothing that I need to worry about. You said there's nothing I should need to worry about, which implies there could be something I might want to worry about. He tells you that there's also a possibility that you end up developing a line of technology that may interfere with the relay system or changes to the muon reactor. All sorts of things like that could be something you want to worry about, and you should consult him regarding. Okay. So randomly, he'll say things like um, even he'll even bring up uh, Walter, <coughs> not Walter Riker, but um. Captain Winfield's uh, randomly just opening up an access panel. He often says that there's a lot of, what he'll say is unsecured <laughs> personnel going through your development labs, and he finds that somewhat alarming. Somewhat alarming. <laughs> I understand. It's well, like a bunch of monkeys what do you in a circus. <laughs> <laughs> what do you yeah, have I'm for imagining the comics lockdown protocols in your the zoo? What he'll describe is what he'll describe is given their history over the last several hundred years they've developed somewhat of a he would say a, a somewhat insular and very protective society um, he says that he would never witness something like your facility layout he would equate standard operating procedure to be closer to that of a um, uh, the White House defense or an right. underground bunker okay. that would be the basic and high security areas would be under blast doors lockdowns <laughs> they're he, suppose, he says that they're a very careful people. All right. As he looks at your security. <laughs> you're, yep. you're like, all right, let's go do more mall. <laughs> He's got the, the security guard in the background eating a donut and a coffee. You're like, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> let's do it, people. <laughs> she turns there's, walks away. there's still a Christmas tree up in the back. <laughs> it's still plugged in. Exactly. Is that a fire hazard? <laughs> Is that the 4th of July? <laughs> I uh, try to administrate and do tactics and you can't I try to be leadership. A try to make my facility more secure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's what I can do, man. That's man, she's really turning into a ball buster. What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> I, can't get in I got an ID card now. <laughs> I can't get in stock because you forget my ID card. They won't let me in. This is <laughs> bullshit. <laughs> they know me. You've seen me before, <laughs> right? <laughs> hey, hey, Jab, can you get out those matter manipulation gloves? Yeah, I need another ID card, man. This <laughs> would be awesome. It's not that you think it's hard to implement. It's just you, you're you starting from the ground up. There's yep. really nothing here to begin with. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, one of the first things is like, maybe we should put up a fence around here. <laughs> you know, barbed right. wire on top. You know, anybody <laughs> can just walk here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like a random farmer is just striding on his limbs. Just like walking Our two security there. watch the road. There could just be a dude that walks up in a duster from the creek. Nope. I don't awesome. like it. Not only that, but every time something similar like that in the past has happened, it's usually you go out there and you're like, yeah, like, that hobo's fine. Let him in. <laughs> <laughs> so don't worry. This happens every Tuesday, guys. All right. So once again, you guys well, can let some wrong. time pass. You can decide what you want to work on. Yada, yada, yada. Um, if you wanted to, you could easily, um, what is it? You would be back in the States at this point in time. You could have dropped off or talked to Colonel uh, Smith inside of the city other things of that nature. There was one thing I wanted to show you. Um, I've showed you some of the other strange technology you've come across before, but there's, um, it's, it's a different um, 
just there's a different feel about the great aisles and it's obvious that their hypertech is now in the forefront there's no uh, disillusion between um, what's actually capable and what's actually being um, what the hell is it what's um, being held from the public just due to security and things of that nature you've seen airships flying invisible range of um, the public and some of that might be doing just for a beacon of, or sliver of hope that when well, we have advanced technology yeah. and so on and so forth. If you're losing, you might as well show it anyways. Uh, Everyone's going to be around a little bit to hide it from. Uh, us. Are they losing though? Mm-hmm. They lose. Out of, out of eight battles fought, they win three. That's that, higher than they used to be. That's not how you win a war. Who wins three, our side or their side? Our side. But they assassinate how many Doesn't full bloods? The thing the is, the, pure, is the, the pure bloods are actually hard to get to. They use... Okay. New mission. Not only the, of war. Not only <laughs> that, but they take nearby fishing communities that have really nothing to gain, and either they enslave them or they bribe them with gold and the, the hope of protection that if you're on your side, we're not going to come killing you. Exactly. And they use them as breeding camps, and then they create these weird fishmen hey, you that live? mature very Bend quickly. Over. and They send them into the grinder. Send them into the grinder, and they don't care. They don't care anything about the hybrids. Unless you're full pure blood, they don't give two shits about you. However, uh, yeah. So how do the hybrids take that, though? Are they just like... They're just fine with They're it. fully indoctrinated. They got their... Uh. Full on. <laughs> yeah, they're good. So in other words, the war tithing effort would be like, here's what they care about you. And actually, as a hybrid, you can survive <coughs> in the sea, and your prospects are good because you can go back to the cities. You are you have the potential of surviving the meat grinders, yeah. and you're not seen as so much human trash. You have some sort of yes. semblance, yeah. uh, but they you're not you're not deep ones. You're just, they, they tolerate you. Yeah. You've seen some of these type tanks around Great Britain, and it seems like they're able to climb over rubble, uh, move up steep cliff sides, and other things of that nature. Um, from what Looks you've like seen, they've used strange specialty rounds as well. On the top. Why do they have German markings? That's what I'm wondering. Because <laughs> that's what the picture has. <laughs> <laughs> they, they were they designed them in here or in England, but then they outsourced it to Germany. Oh. And they have to repaint them when they come back over. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Maybe they're made in Germany. Germany has an excellent production, and they yeah. ship them in through France through a skyship. They actually beam them up into atmosphere first, and <laughs> they'd sell them to anyone, though. <laughs> anyone who shows up with money. There you go. <laughs> Next so thing, the deep ones. <laughs> 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 if anything, Britain is selling off a lot of their gold and other resources of that manner, just because it's not as valuable to them anymore. But the other countries are still taking gold. Yeah. Your wealth is not valuable to you when you're dead. <laughs> yeah. They'll rec if there's an after war time period, they'll rec rec reclaim their great country then. All right. So my turn? Do I get yes. So. Well, this will be coming into the next week because okay. your last several days we're learning. That was um, actually just an hour. The last several days we're learning. Um, what the so hell is it? Your acrobatics and the other spell that he wanted to work on. Yeah. And body language, finishing okay. that up. So this would be the, the week after that. Um. It is now actually... Ba, 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 ba. So am I in America now? You are. Because I'm assuming you had went with um, Angus. Angus. Angus stayed during the Christmas holiday. Angus, you got the <coughs> weapons from... Yes, Sir Lancelot's sword. Yeah, he could have done that. Not Sir Lancelot's sword. What they show you is... Uh, this is Excalibur. Probably um, three long swords. Look at mine. Two long swords, a broadsword, um, a heavy flail, <coughs> and three shields. <coughs> the shields are kite swords. <coughs> Do you have heraldry? I don't think you have herald heraldry. What the heck is heraldry? <laughs> exactly. A uh, skill that you'd never otherwise use in this game setting. Okay, heraldry is the ability to look at symbols and recognize who they belong to. In ancient medieval Europe, types of things like that. You'd be able to know what house a knight is from, or potentially what kingdom somebody's from. No, you guys need me in anthropology. You don't have that. I do. Did it by seven. All right. You can tell that they do appear to be from. Um, what the hell is it? Some of these are um, relics from Great Britain. 
Um, there is references to the city of, what is it, the, the Camelot itself. Uh, whether these come from there or just, um, what the hell is it, have markings indicating that they might be related to a house from something like that or just related to um, the, what is it, King, what is it, um, what is it, Alexander, was it? King Alexander? I can't remember off No, name. King Arthur. King Arthur, thank you, that's it. I started with a name. Uh, it might be related to King Arthur or even Merlin. You're not sure specifically. Um, but there's three larger kite shields, um, the two long swords, a broad sword. And I might change that uh, yeah. depending on what uh, they might end up having. But <coughs> it seems as though, for the most part, a lot of these are made out of steel. Does, um, does heavy flail go under axe mace? Yeah, I, uh, I think it's actually a default. It's on flail skill. Um, th- excuse me, that would also be two um, probably um, cards. hatchet. And a battle axe. <laughs> Give me some of your cards, Trevor. <laughs> some of my pocket cards. Mm. That's disgusting. Ugh. Uh, the objects here, obviously, are, do seem to be authentic weapons. There are nicks and scratches where they appear to be used. But otherwise, if these are authentic, they do appear to be um, several hundred years old. They don't have any indications where the leather bindings are them are starting to rot away. I mean, there's no visible rust on any of the objects. Um, Does he know what they do? From what he understands, Kill, yeah, he, he knows that they're mystical. Uh, from what he's been told, they're guarded away from uh, fairy and demon magic. Um, from what he has tested, um, it was able to relatively bounce off a very small primal blast. But he says he's not demonic or... He says he doesn't know if it counts as demon anymore, but it was a primal entity. But at he least doesn't. magic, he couldn't... He couldn't... Um, scratch them. Is there any way to identify I should say he didn't say that he couldn't scratch them. He just said he did a very small one. It seemed to deflect off when a normal iron plate would probably have broke. A buckle. Are these something we could turn over to um, Michael Larson for further study that they could actually tell us what these yeah, things are? Yeah, probably could. Okay. So maybe we should engage that be. Because I have nothing else to do. I'll go engage Michael Larson again. I'll walk over and see the guy. I can walk over and see him. Sure. You could call him. Uh, you'd have to take a look at these objects physically. You can get your new driver. Assuming you're getting a new driver. Or? I get a new driver. Somebody that's been through the Great War that needs a job and doesn't have too much post-traumatic stress disorder. Okay. I'll introduce you to Artemis. Caddy. Eh? He seems very nice. My master. <laughs> Your master, I do laugh at that. He does seem to kind of go back up to one haunches a little bit. He seems like he tries to act a little bit noble. <laughs> um, don't be insulting him. I don't insult your stuff. All right, I apologize. I didn't. Was it the cat that Jeb hangs out with his master? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Well, We're all apprentices here. Well, Jeb's further along the path than I am. I'm not an apprentice. No, you're not. But I mean, I was talking. I, I am a master. I have lots. I of was talking about the bastards. Gotcha. Religiously, I can imagine that you're probably much less than somebody who's been doing it for eight lives. I don't know, a long time. <laughs> <laughs> Born of the masters. Yep. All right. Well, welcome to the car. Um, <laughs> I assume you'll be cleaning up <laughs> after him if he has a litter box or something. He takes care of himself very well. All right. What's his name again? Artemis. Artemis. Pleased to meet you, Artemis. Is there anything I can do for you tech-wise? Shield? <laughs> anything like that? Do you No. <laughs> he says no, thank you. Yeah, I, when he <laughs> shook his head, no, I kind of figured that one out. So, so when he enters the facility, is there a certain furry-faced... Yep, yeah. well, that's what he was talking about was, while you were in the bathroom. I was introducing Artemis to be. Hmm? Artemis, the cat, his master. His master. Yes. It makes sense again. Beastmaster. Oh. Instead of Beastmaster, he'd be... So are you going to get a little papoose for him? <laughs> papoose. <laughs> Artemis is going to Artemis seems to stare at you for a bit. I'm right in the room. I'll be like... You talk to me like I'm not here. I demand authority. <laughs> Cat paw. Do you want me to be, be like, him? have you met pudding? <laughs> or also... I know pudding. 
There's no G in that. <laughs> Puddin prefers not to walk as much as other cats, we've noticed, and so we thought... Puddin's prerogative! It's whatever Puddin wants to do. Yeah, all right. You so, lay back, you go with the flow. But you don't want a papoose. You find no, I don't want a papoose. Right, right. I've got my own system here. All I right. feel like he's... This is my area, and he kind of walks in a <laughs> round area. All right, it's all yours. This right here, this is mine. All right. So, when's Christmas? That would be the last week, as I had described. Huh. You could have done something if you wanted to. There was a large party at Beast facility for individuals. There would probably be a few extra faces that people haven't seen before, but security hasn't been implemented yet. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, it's my brother Bob. I'm not my girlfriend. <laughs> See, this is that weird shiny thing I've been showing you about. It's making it weird. Little, look at this. We can lift up a crate. Oh, oh, it's, like it's like mercury. It's awesome. It's black. Exactly. Greg's going to use that weird thing and lift up the car. <laughs> it's going to be sweet. <laughs> your staff is awesome. They are. You uh, I'll whisper cat. in your ear. I think he really wants to propose. I don't think so. I think he's just... <laughs> I'm not sure if he's going to kick your ass or I'm going to kick your ass, but I'm pretty sure between the two of us, one of us is just going to kick your ass. I I believe that, like the other cats, I can't know spells and stuff, so... Welcome to the group. I've seen all the other cats. They all seem to hold their own, and they're very helpful, and I'm going to be glad you're here. If there's Mm. anything high-tech I can do for you, you just need to let me know. I'll peruse. (laughs) All right. <laughs> Go ahead and peruse. Uh, there's a lot of potential energies. You can see we keep things on shelves, but that's what you Yes, he's work. noticed the shelves and the chairs leading up to the yeah. shelves and the other high places that he can get <laughs> yeah. to. Yeah, so you're going to There's lots of High things. places allow him to slipstream more easily. That's good. Oh, but there's a weird bubble around this place. There is a weird bubble. It's to help keep out the... What do you keep in the other place? Which other place? The extra dimensional space? Yes, the space below here. Other than boxes. Let's go take a look. I don't really know. and So far we haven't <laughs> security procedures. He'll go jump up to a high point. Getting ready to slipstream. Come near me. All right, I come over. <laughs> I go over you have to it. ride. Okay, grab onto your friends so don't get lost in the sea. All right. I grab onto you. All right. I have no idea what this will do to my paradox. <laughs> I think he looks over. You can do whatever you want with him. <laughs> Bring him All Could right. be an adventure. Could be. At this point, I probably will have the gravity hammer because I was going to show it to him. Have him take a swing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's a, somewhat like a, midi- yeah. a modernized yeah. medieval hammer. Okay. Um, I do as he asks, and whatever that requires to be riding, I climb up on a shelf or whatever. And... Right. Um, ultimately, he climbs to a high you area. You seem to be in the nearby area. Just you guys can give me a fright check. Fright. Height. Hmm? Fright check. 13. By 9. By 10. By the 10? apprentice is most okay. scared. Near 13. Yeah. You may buy. 9. Okay. All the guys are good. Um, it's just strange because the cat's sitting there for a moment and then you appear to enter some sort of weird Doctor Who esque tunnel, but only for about a second as you end up hearing the cat say, Slipstream! <laughs> and then you're, here and you're like, What the hell has this happened? Yeah. <laughs> You saw the cat dive <laughs> downwards, and then you were in a tunnel moving forwards as the cat was like, Whoa! <laughs> you guys can give me body, uh, body, sense. body sense rolls at a minus an, four. An actual roll? Yep. I don't have body sense. Wait. Okay. The what body, if I have dex roll. Body what if I have sense body at a minus four? Huh? What if I already have body sense? It's in a minus four. Okay. We're actually making a body sense roll. Yes, so if you don't have body sense, it's minus nine. Missed by one. Okay. Dex minus nine. Dex minus nine, that's it. So. I failed the 10. By 10? Missed by one. Straight okay. up with the minus four. All right. You stumble a little bit. Um, what the hell? Ha- you made a body sense roll by that much? Yeah. Or, okay. Um, you stumble. Um, what is it? So you made it. You stumble a little bit just because uh, when you come out, you're kind of going fairly fast as opposed to other types of teleportation. Okay. Um, it seems as though you were in a fluid environment which you could try to redirect where you were going to in the stream but since you're so close you imagine that's why it only lasted for a moment um, so you stumble a little bit B uh, tries to kind of reassert herself kind of forward and she ends up doing a full flip forward um, she hurts her hand a little bit but it seems like she does a full barrel roll, roll forwards like almost like she fell down the steps a little bit Artemis looks over Ah, oh, you've got to watch the step roll with it you tuck your head and you roll to the side with it You'd imagine yeah. that the acrobatics might help you in this particular incident. The strange thing is, 
This appears to be the same area that your um, facility is at. It looks fairly identical, except there's no building. The only thing that is here is a relay, and what appears to be various um, <coughs> large metallic crates stacked near the relay. Are we... Isn't this Maclot's place? It could be Maclot's place, or it could be their relay station. Where it's a tucked area. Started. It's a tucked area underneath your area, like a flip-flop. Oh, well, let's take a look at some of these boxes. Walks around. Start looking around. Okay. Um, coming across, the box is even to be completely sealed. Anyone can give me a perception tracking. Luck. Ten. Ten. Seriously, if I get another sixteen with my luck, better. Ten. Okay. Um, from what you can see. What the hell is he made it by? Ten. Ten. Uh, so we'll describe to everyone. You notice that it does look as though the ground isn't completely undisturbed. There are what appears to be tracks of crates. Nothing like a large vehicle that you can see, but obviously there's sections where it looks like a crate had been shifted and that it's been moved somewhere, and you don't know how it's been moved from location to location. You also see what is it seems to be indicative of various different shoe sizes, but it's a strange, weird, contoured group boot. Um, they average from probably around size 10 to size 14. Um, Does that correspond to anything? Does it look like hybrid boots? It looks like human-esque shoes, other than the grip pattern on the bottom is really strange and elaborate. Like a power suit? It's hard to tell. How much weight is it bearing? With a 10 and you made it by? 7. 7 and you made it by? 10. 10. Okay, so all of you could tell that it looks like... On average, even the lighter ones are probably holding somewhere around 240 pounds. Some of the heavier ones are close to 300. Um, given from the size of the boot and the stride, the individuals are carrying either a lot of weight or heavier than they should be. That's a fat lot, or they have power suits. Mm. I'm betting on fat. It doesn't seem like anything's recently been disturbed. <coughs> there is no breeze here. Um, so I, the, a lot of this could be sitting here from some time ago, but there obviously are crates here. What's in the um, crates? Are they like wooden boxes? Iron they're metallic boxes? boxes. They seem to be completely sealed. There is some <coughs> sort of um, what appears to be like terminal on the front of the boxes. Be yeah, You've be seen this once before when a larger shipment of um, um, Atom 7 had been shipped in for the relay, and it came in a box identical to this, and the drone opened it. I'll see if I can't can you open, it? open it with computer operations. Uh, not a computer operation, you can do electronics repair security. You think that if you knew the code or the sequence of sigils that are on here, you'd be able to tell? There seemed to be a panel, and from what you saw the before, like some of these can be opened. You just don't know how. Electronics repair security. I have communications on here twice. That's awesome. You can change one Points. of them, then. <laughs> I got a point. So it's obviously security. <laughs> the second one. Okay. What about the third one? Dang, good roll. I did it by eight. By eight? You don't have terribly good t um, technology regarding breaking into other high pieces of technology. It's never something you've needed to develop. Um, if you had a high-tech tool set, you think it would be relatively easy. But you do manage to um, bust it. It does look like you can get into it. However, the dials have all on all of these boxes gone red. Um, interior to this one, you can see that it appears to be carrying large amounts of what appear to be other um, boxes, but it seems as though they're less secure. And there even are um, what appears to be some strange form of premium. Um, you can identify some of this as resistium, even um, Xerxes. Xerxes is the material in which um, the relay had... Xerxes, if I double check here... Um... I'll pick and be like, really? You didn't even get ray guns or power suit armor? You get metal? Raw materials. Except well, on the other boxes where those are ones are probably like a little furnace in there. So, excuse me, Xenium. Um, Xenium-14 is a quantumly entangled conductive material. It was what um, small samples that Captain Winfield had used in his power armor. Also, it's used in the relay and um, was temper. Was it? It's used in certain points of the relay. And was also used um, in 
when you provided power to the uh, what have you the next box working for the ray guns man uh, was it when you provided power to the buttress system inside of New York but all of these are parts that could theoretically have remade a relay but there's also a few elements that you haven't seen used before at least you're not sure what what it's for specifically okay um, if you guys and that's inside one of the smaller boxes, right? It's one side of one of the crates. And it's, all the crates are the same size, just like there's individual units sh- sh- inside each one of these crates. All right, we need to leave here and try to erase our tracks. Ah, we can leave the tracks. I'll go up there and tell them what I've done. Okay. About this time, however, you do see the drone. Um, the cat seems to somewhat uh, disoriented, um, kind of look around prior to the drone arriving, but then it kind of surprises him. He kind of jumps back a little bit. Um, the drone arrives at this Does point he in time. Does he hiss? Hair stand no, up? No, he doesn't hiss or anything. It just seems as though he's vaguely aware of something in the region, but he's having a hard time locating, di- it. locating where it is. And you've had similar... You feel as though there's certain been certain technologies where you've been vaguely aware of it, but it, it, it doesn't detect like magic. You're just yeah. vaguely aware that it might be working in right. a similar um, field. Uh, so the drone arrives, and you can hear Dr. Mechlod. Oh, uh, is there something that you needed, Beatrice? No, I discovered this facility in extra dimensional space below my facility. He I says it's not a facility, it's more really a, a storage area. It's part of the buffer system that's used to protect your base. Right. Anyway, I, I didn't. <coughs> Without having full disclosure, I didn't know it was yours, so I busted it into this box. It's not that I needed anything. He didn't detail it specifically, but he says this is part of the buffer system. If anyone were to try to forcibly teleport to your base, they would arrive here. Well, there you go. In the background, he'll come. First time I've tried to do this. I came down here to investigate what's in all the boxes. He says various supplies to rebuild the relay if they need be. Um, a lot of the supply requests that are made by the locals um, are done in larger shipments. Which he t- was at the your facility. He says they're done in larger shipments. So the drone pulls them from here from a local okay. source rather than what he says is um, charging up the relay for a mass transit every time someone needs something. Gotcha. So what's the defensive system for unwanted visitors? He says that the relay protects, what is it, can detect, um, uh, what have you. (coughs) And then the drone starts attacking (laughs) Zykes. The relay relay system can detect, um, what the hell is it, gate, was it, (coughs) transdimensional and, um, what the hell is it? Local spatial rifts, and it'll attempt to shut them down on the edge of the border. Um, if not, it will redirect them to this particular region and make everyone aware at the facility. If need be, this subspace can be uncompressed destructively. Okay. All right. Um, he also tells you that there is a um, what he had said before, Adam Seven. There was some sort of plated Adam Seven system, and he says there is a shield, uh, which he would say is a kinetic shield. That's part of the relay. So, Artemis, you can However, with what your body language, you guys can give me... Body bi- language! Not so much body language in this one. Detect lies. Or body language detect at a minus language. four. Detect language. Detect lies. By five. Oh, no. Fifteen. Two, thirteen. Only by two. By two. One. One. Five. You guys get what I told you. You would say that he is a little bit um, uh, prompt with his answering, almost like he's talking to a security guard that walked into a restricted zone. Like, uh, you're supposed to be in the bio lab, or <laughs> what's going on here? You're, you're emptying the trash cans? <laughs> uh, yeah, so you need to tell someone before coming to this. However, it's very subtle, and you pick up on that. You guys don't pick what up on that walks so here with these big, heavy feet? He says that they've moved shipments from time to time and have checked local gravity. They've had technicians check the field. Who are your technicians? They're all like heavyweight dudes. <coughs> he says Odd that there's structure. what he would say is exoplanetary equipment to protect from rapid decon. What is it? Rapid um, power suits, man. He'll tell you hostile environments. Um, when I want you to prompt the NPCs, I'll push you in the back. <laughs> <laughs> He'll tell you. Exo exploration gear, standard right. protocol for sending anyone to an extra um, planetary origin, which they consider Earth extra planetary. All right. So if we found any ray guns, can we keep a sample? He says that there's no ray guns in any of these. How often do you send your teams on? 
He says to here technicians. Yeah. He says probably about once a month. And what's the need for the technicians to come here for? Doesn't the system self maintain itself? He says there's certain remote things that he can't do immediately from here, and the drone is not capable of testing certain elements. So what tests have they done? Meaning, on the, what is it? Most of this he'll tell you, um, and it does seem as though he tries to direct it more towards B. Sure. Um, but you're, you're just hearing voice through a drone system. He says that initially when the relay was set up, there was technicians on this side making sure that there were no mishaps because of the technological inexperience that B's people had. Um, not only that, but the conditions on Earth could have been drastically different from what they expected. There might have been physics uh, changes here. The relay might have not gone online, and they wanted to have eyes on just in case this needed to be permanently shut down before anything went awry. Nowadays, it's primarily just maintenance, checking on it occasionally. Once a, He says a few hours a month, okay. somebody comes out here physically. Otherwise, the <coughs> drone is more than sufficient. Can you meet your people when they're out here? He says he could arrange for something like that. You can tell even with, the, with your level of body language, like he probably isn't lying about that whole insular thing. Um, every time people ask a lot of specific questions, he gets very evasive. He says that he could arrange a controlled meeting in which one of his facility members could. Would you ever want to come meet in person? He says potentially. However, there's a lot of things to consider and there's protocols that he needs to go through. Gotcha. All right. And what did you say again your long-term goal was with the relay? Well, he says that until that dark fluid beacon had been sent out, they assumed that Earth was completely taken over by the various entities. Uh, they'll tell you serpents and deep ones and other things like that, and humans only existed in this world as a slave race. Um, it had only come to their attention recently that there were humans capable of developing hyper-technology. So they're, this is more of a precursory exploratory mission to find out what or if any interest they'll have here in the future. However, to facilitate their exploration, they needed a local site. B became the technician on this side. With their help, they set up a power system and a relay. From there, they're able to send and move what he'll say is materials and resources through the field. Aside from energy, what is it that you crave on your side of this relationship? He says that he's not in need of any material products that they necessarily have. Their asteroid belt in this system is of interest to them. However, from their deep um, deep space telemetry, it seems as though there's another alien species, Migo, that are primarily resident in that asteroid belt. Okay. It seems as though they're after the same type of technology, same type of materials. Okay. And you're aware that there's certain dust technology that seems to bear striking resemblance. Like even their map, their calculations, there's MIGO symbols in there. Right. Um, you don't know what their affiliation is or whether or not a lot of their technology might have been originally <coughs> reverse engineered from it, like Yith tech or Serpent tech. But it seems as though they use a lot of the same materials as the MIGO do. So he says that there are resources on Earth, but of course there's factions, zoning, and other things of that nature. And they wouldn't want to get in conflict with necessarily your government. Um, but so, so how many planets do you currently have subjugated? Or? They don't subjugate any planet. Oh, Most of okay. the locations that they exist on are remote and he'll say uninhabited by any sentient creature. Okay. I think I'd like to continue this conversation up with the Viewer. The monitor? Yeah. The viewer monitor, yep. He says that he can transport you from here. All right, well, that'd be great. Well, it takes a small amount of time. You guys... I'd rather yeah. slipstream. Just you okay with this, Artemis? The cat's not sure. He says that um, he's having a difficult time following its movement. It doesn't flow normally. It's all hard and robotic. It's, it's hard it to get out of here. Let's go the... The Is he talking drone. about the drone? Or? He's talking about the, the drone and how it came in. Yeah. He thinks he can go from here. This place is really close. And he says once you're inside the bubble, then it becomes easy to move around. All right. I'll go with the drone just to see how it does. You seem to... Was it fairly seamlessly transit back to the same location next to the relay? Uh, you probably even shock one of the researchers. However, he doesn't question it too much because... Unfortunately, they've been become they've become um, accustomed accustomed to seeing things like that. They're like, "Oh, hey, B," and then like continues on. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> All 
All right. All you damn it, but it is long. Well, we're at the end of the week here, so decide what you want to do for your uh, next time period. I give everyone two points. Yeah. Does Artemis have a spell that that allows you to increase your dexterity for periods of time? Yeah, the cat's grace. <clears throat> but when Jeb uses it, it's just I make one dex roll and then it goes away, right? He says that Jeb's a bit difficult to teach anything. From <laughs> what I hear. So if you That's why Scarlet has him. She's very wise. Okay. He says any ability could be extended over a time period. It just holding on to it a long period of time would hing, what is it, um, hamper your flow. Right, but if you needed to have a higher dexterity because say you're engaged in a melee. He says then cat's grace. Okay. It's a bit of a dance. It's a step to the right and then a jump to the left. Or a step to the left and then a jump to the right. <laughs> but then you need to learn something else to extend it. He says no. Okay. You just need to know how to extend it correctly. Okay. I'm going to send this home with you so you can take it to work. I actually got an email. I'll actually stop the recording here. Ba-da! Ah.